My friends, this is AI Dungeon Crawlers. Today is Monday, December 20th, 2021. And welcome to the dungeon, where the four of us traverse the treacherous mind of a sinister AI, programmed with the insights of 10,000 authors, conjuring final exams at our every turn as we struggle to make the greatest young adult fantasy novel since the last time we did it, because we rock. We we're so good at this. Just a friendly reminder. If you link your Amazon Prime to Twitch, you unlock Twitch Prime, which gives you one free subscription to any channel on the platform per month. We would love it if you used it here. We also have a tip jar down below if you feel so inclined, but if you really want to support the show, be sure to share it with friends and family. Follow us on Instagram, as well as like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. It's all a huge help. Tonight, we return to the world of magic and mystery. I'll summon in our cast with the magic words. Double, double, toil and trouble. Fires burn and cauldron bubbles. Simmer down now. Save that magic for the show. It's our protagonist tonight, Jesse Beam. Hi, Jesse. Jack. Jesse, how are you? Oh, it's a wacky time here in Toronto with Omicrons sure at our every is. turn. All right, how about, let me ask you this again. How are you, but with a smile on your face because it's the season finale. Jack, I'm great. <laughs> I'm great, Jack. It's yeah. so fun. You can see the pain in his eyes. Thank you so much uh, for being here, Jesse. Oh, we love you. It's been so. 365 days of this bullshit. I'm so happy to have you Forward here. Forward to another me. 365 more. Hell to the yes. Abracadabra. Oh, hey, Eric. I know you'll be narrating tonight. But it's just us to wrap up this year of the show. Do you want to also play a character or two? Yeah, all right, Jack. All right, maybe maybe we could you like to we, play we, a character. I was gonna say, can I can I can I also can we play them together? Let's all play characters. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. No, 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 shut up, Noah. You've not been summoned yet. Let's all play characters. <laughs> they don't in exist fact, in the world. By the power of Grayskull, he has the power to draw. It's our illustrator, <laughs> Noah Schaefer. Hey, Noah, good to see you. I had Hello. a question for you. It's just yeah. us to wrap up this year of the show. Do you want to play some characters with us? <laughs> oh man, you know I wasn't expecting that question. <laughs> How uh, could you have been? You you weren't here to. No, good. You I wasn't here. even here. I wasn't even here. Sure, if something comes up and I feel like I've got, I've got a hold on it, then why not? Oh, I love that. So, so, um, how should we do this? Do you want to just like, as they come up, we'll just kind of assign them around. People call them out as, as, as you yeah. want to do them. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. Uh, Jack, did we go over a drinking game? Oh no. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're, okay, you're, I also you're forgot. Right, rocketed through those. Hey, hey, me hey, hey Jesse. Yeah. Our protagonist tonight, Jesse Beam. Hey, hey, Jesse. Hang on, I'm just going to drink to forget. It's the season one finale. Well done, well done. Jesse, yes. what are we drinking today and how? Um, well, I'm actually drinking some lovely hot cider today because it's very cold out. And it's a, it's a warm, comforting holiday feeling in a cup, which I think is a nice way to wrap up the year. We are, of course, going to drink to forget whenever we get something the AI gives us and we're like, nope, I don't like that. We're going to do that as we usually do. I also thought that mm -hmm. today would be really fun just based on the fact that we're closing off or capping off the year. And also just the way our character works, which Eric's going to explain in a minute. Our character loves to accomplish things and finish tasks. So I figured every time we finish something, we'll drink to celebrate. I love that. Also, Jesse, it's it's the it's the season finale, so you drink because we're finishing the. I said the that, season. didn't I? A cap to the season. Did you? Did he say that? He did. Okay. I meant well, to the well, season of the say show. Say it again, everyone. Well, say it's it cap again, to the season that's of the what show. Everybody knows. All right, Abracadabra. Oh, hey, Eric. I know you'll be narrating tonight. I'm not doing that. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, fine. All right. I guess then there was just one more. Ear, Jack. I brought. Okay, really go ahead. Yes, in the, please. In the in 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 the um. In, in 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 honor of doing a young adult novel again, I thought, what's what's more young adult than um, octopus wants to fight? I oh, can't. I love that beer. Oh, that's my what? partner's favorite beer. Is actually Wait, are you really serious? This is like just a calm people really like this. Yeah, it's a yeah, good beer. It's actually really good. It's a really good part, and it also t warns you about the dangers of having octopuses as pets on the can. Ooh, can you get? It is very dangerous. I can. Well, I, don't I can know. see it just from experience. You know, he's kind of a jerk. They leave. Oh. Like, <laughs> Yeah. 
They leave their I understand. Sorry, I thought, thought you were you were saying that the can had like a list of reasons not to have an octopus. <laughs> that as a list. No, it tells you a story, Jack. It says our pet octopus is a little bit of a jerk. He's that guy who is a couple. Uh, then either tells you how much he loves you or threatens to fight you. So we brewed up this IPA with eight varieties of hops and eight types of malt. We targeted 88 IBU and 8.8 .8 to appease him. Because they have eight, eight legs, Jack. I don't you know what it? that means. That's a okay. lot of numbers. Okay, great. Sadly, but that's great. Found, that's, I get it. Yeah, he was. He made him more volatile. It didn't work, Jack. The point is, and it was tough to have an octopus as a pet. Wow. So you drink it instead. Hmm. Well, everybody, I guess <laughs> there's just one more magic word. Please. God, just let me get through one more of these. <laughs> They've never not derailed. <laughs> I can only take being slumped in this corner for so long, and it's been a hard year. <laughs> Eric. Yeah, Jack, what, what do you want to know? This week. <laughs> tell, tell me about the world. Oh, I'm super excited. We're going back to Astrologio, world of colleges and magic. Um, and we are a young boy named Thermos. But unlike most boys you might know, Thermos is a stout a young race that looks like meerkats who love to get things done. It's super cool, and we're going to go to the festival of the Comet? Yeah, the Comet Day of the Comet Storm Festival, where there That's are many grand name. jolly japes to be had. But we're stuck outside. Oh, no. How are we going to get in? Anyway, we'll what? figure it out. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, no. ooh. What, a, what an adventure. Oh, everybody ready to dive in? Yeah, let, let me, us um, dive. Let me just give you a little bit of it. Let us dive. Hold on. Let me get a good uh, 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 sustained strings and a flute. That seems right. Wait, Jack, what was your 88 thing? I didn't hear it. Uh, I didn't have one because... Oh. <laughs> You're slumped in the corner. All right, let's go. 88 punchlines. Let's go. 88 regrets. <laughs> All of them being that but an joke. instrument ain't one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. Set the scene a little bit. Where are we? I'm gonna, I'm gonna read the it. I don't know. That's what I was. I was Come up, Jack. Say, Eric, we've done this like 35 <laughs> times. <laughs> All right. Astrologia is a world where the ten schools of magic revolve around various parts of life and society. Magic is the crutch that holds Astrologia together. From the small child who needs help with his homework, all the way up to the major wizarding wars. The world follows the cycle of the school year and is constantly in a state of flux thanks to the countless battles being fought in the name of honor, reputation, and rank. It's a world of both beauty and horror of intrigue and adventure. You are Thermos Sprouts Alcorn, a stout student of the College of Roundness in the Forest of Roundness. Now is a time of great celebration. All of the colleges of Astrologia are coming together for the Day of the Comet Storm Festival. Everyone is looking forward to the many jolly japes to come, such as the Great Hedgehog Hunt, the Blind Sprouts Gathering, and the Fabled Turnip Toss. Oh, no. oh, I've heard so much about it! Yeah, I know, who hasn't? Wow! <laughs> what a time. You, for one, can't wait for the fireworks display at the end of the festivities. Mm. There is going to be a grand display like no other. The Town of Splendor has been working on it for all year, and from what you've heard, it's set to break the sky in two. Oh, I love the sound of that. This is all very exciting for you and your college friends. But where are you? You're currently standing in the line. Nice, nice rhetorical question. See what I did? I reeled them in. <laughs> Thanks, AI. <laughs> You're current. <laughs> where are you? You're currently standing in the line, uh, in line to enter the town of Splendor with your college friends. All 50,000 of them. <laughs> oh, we have a lot of friends. Yeah. Wow! So many friends! I thought the human mind doesn't have capacity for more than like a thousand well, we're friends. we're not a human right? mind. We're a stout no? mind, yes. baby. You're right! <laughs> Look at Oh, Noah, he's so round. <laughs> oh. He's a... 
Up. Not a straight line on him. I like that he's wearing his bathrobe. <laughs> Goes no, dead. it's his it's his wizard robe. Oh, it right. just happens to be blue and fuzzy. <laughs> As they <laughs> should. For comfort. Wizarding in style. Yeah. Uh you turn to your best friend, a fox uh your best friend, Foxillian, a young Mononose girl. From the moment you met her, you knew she was someone you could trust. Always friendly and good for a smile. You have become fast yeah. friends, even if she is from the College of Fittitude. <laughs> Ugh, that's jocks. Uh, I think this is, uh, yeah, this is us. So Je Jesse. Oh, why is the? Uh, I guess this is what he sounds like. Why is there such a hold up to get into Splendor? Last I heard, there was supposed to be more than enough room for all the colleges in Astrologia. You say? Uh, who wants uh, to be? Is this Vanita? Vanita. This, I'll be the second best friend and fellow student of Vanita. I feel like this is a role I fit quite well. well you know. Oh, I heard that some of the colleges decided to come a few days early and stay in splendor, causing an overcrowding issue. Replies your second best friend and fellow student Vanita. Vanilla always feels like she seems needs to chime in. Well, you especially know, since a lot her of voice friendship. dropped. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of people listen to me these days. Hello, everybody. Hey, it's me, Vanita. Can Foxillion. I interest you in a Porsche? <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Foxillion says, no, do you want to be Foxillion? <gasps> when I look at you, I think Fox person. No, I think Foxy. Foxy. <laughs> Foxy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Foxy. Foxy. No issue. Fine. <laughs> All right. Why not? I'll give Foxillion a go. <laughs> if that's the case, we're going to be here a while. The College of Elements is a... The College of Elements is a full college, and the camp takes up a large section of the plains. You, oh, sorry. You all, <laughs> good job, good, good first you did line. Great Noah. Yeah, you all Confidence. sit down, resign, down in resigned silence, as it dawns on you that you might not even get to enter the town. Oh no! No. Well, at least we could see the fireworks from out here. It's me, your second best friend, Vanita. <laughs> Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Look at that cloud. It looks a bit like a tree. Isn't that cool? She certainly always feels like she has something to <laughs> say to about shine. everything. <laughs> Whoa, we got a big text. Whoa. Oh, with a, with a speech oh. bubble. All right. Interesting. You say? Well, we can't just mope about. Benita, use those language skills of yours and let's try to convince the others to let us in. Vanita's... Yeah, all right, real good with the talking. Yo, there's well, no I'll text right there, back. Vanita. Stay in oh. your damn lane. You got actions to do. <laughs> but Vanita always wants to chime in. It's just in character. <laughs> this My is the worst choice we could have ever done. <laughs> Vanita smiles and nods silently for once. She doesn't butt in on the narrator's line. She's always <laughs> appreciative of compliments. You see a group of young dwarves enter the gate. Surely they will help convince the gate guards to let you in. The you dwarves! Walk up, you walk up to the dwarves with your three friends in tow. Wait, hold three on. Three friends? Yeah, who's the third friend? <laughs> then, okay. I, uh, I found a new person. It's a oh, talking wait, no. turnip okay, named that's Frederick. No, Gary. No, no, wait, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, what, what, what? You're right, you're right, Noah. No, okay, for first off, my text isn't updating. Second off, there's Vanita and Foxillian. And us. Yes. But it says that and we're us. walking over with our three friends. So who's the oh, third? Oh, true. Yes. Sorry. We it's, consider our, we are a friend to ourselves. I see. Um, I think it's it's invisible McSilent. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Let's find out. While you lot may have bought tickets and been approved to enter, there is still the matter of convincing the gate guard to let you in. You approach a dwarf with a very large beard and begin to speak. Uh, what? what, Ooh, what? Why, why do I have to speak? Vanita, I told you to do it. Oh, I'm all out of words, my friend. <laughs> I'm out right. of manner, you know. I, I, I suppose I'll have to try and be clever, even though I'm not from the College of a Thousand Tongues like you are. Pretty sure it's ten thousand. Oh, that's even more. It's even more reason you should be doing the talking. 
Oh no, I'm sorry. Um, I have a, uh, we had a redeem of do something stupid from Mysterious P saying use magic to throw a perfect slam dunk. Maybe that's how we'll get in. Maybe there's some sort of yeah skill challenge. Yeah. Some ah, sort of the famous day of the Comet Storm Festival dunk contest. <laughs> yeah, there's the fabled Termit toss and the orange ski ball contest. And so I don't think Jack knows what basketball is. I don't uh, think at all. I think <laughs> it's just a big orange ski ball. You're trying to get it in the in the hoop. It's and you get ten points and a teddy bear in the basket ring. <laughs> in the basket uh, yeah. ring, <laughs> you, you you place the ski ball in the basket ring. Everyone here's played ski ball, large basket ring, throw around big court, run around small shorts, right? God, Canada's the place that invented the damn game, Jack. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I don't know what this energy I have today is. It's strange. What, 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 what do you I don't know, know if it's, I like it's it. It's a strange time in the world. Oh my goodness. I love Thank Vanita you for passing off my. I love. <laughs> that's you know that's the kind of person Noah that definitely needs to learn to use their voice in life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh no. <laughs> You know, you gotta play your strengths. Oh, Thank you. Guys. Yeah, I like I like how you've given. Oh, for a second there, it looked like you gave them like like uh, like they didn't have eyebrows, but rather huge protruding brows of flesh that could. I mean, move honestly, to like themselves. that might as well be what what's going on here. <laughs> but like the Ferengi. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! All right, we've okay, got what text, a, what everybody. All right, read um, on. My friends and I uh, have been waiting for hours to get in. You say? Perhaps you lads could help us in some way. One of the dwarves nods and points towards a basket ring and then to a small ski ball. <laughs> you piece of shit. <laughs> you mother. All right, Eric, do you want to play uh, yeah, the I'll be southern the dwarf? dwarf? <laughs> All right. I Ah, y'all gotta use magic to make a perfect basketball shot. And then we'll trust you. Enough to help you. <laughs> <laughs> he says to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a man who read the script ten minutes ago. <laughs> you look at the basket and think <laughs> that it shouldn't be hard, be too hard. The ski ball court is right next to the gate, oh. so you could easily make a shot that would bounce right off the wall and into the ring. Hey, it's using the term right. we used. <laughs> and when you turn your back to your friends, they all give you a look of disapproval. It's not what? my fault. You say? We needed to do something, and that seemed the easiest. <laughs> when you turn back to your friends... So you walk, they saw you go over to the dwarf, and they're like, yeah, if you win at Ski Ball, we'll trust you. And you turn back to them, and they're like, no. We're not stupid solo as to win Ski Ball. We're, we're not like some crazy dwarf people. <laughs> no. Uh, speaking of which, in the world of Astrologia, what, what is Ski Ball, considering it now apparently canonically exists? Shall, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what a, if, if we were to describe it, it needs to be a little bit more magical than our standard fare. Shall I, shall I generate it? Yeah, why don't you? Uh, so it's S K E E. Yeah, I think S K E E B A L L. B A L L. I just made the choice uh, when I typed it. Say, sport played in. Oh, you generated it as world yeah. info? Yeah, as world info and other. <laughs> Amazing. Sticky uh, Stickman wants to know how drunk we all are, and I have to say, I'm I, completely stone cold sober. Yeah, I have a, a glass of water next to me that I haven't touched. There's not even booze in this cider, it's just hot apple. Oh, hot piece of apple. I've been called that, that many times. Worse? Is that a? Is it more concerning that we're very sober? <laughs> we're just having fun, guys. We're just, we're just having fun have being dudes. We don't have a guest to rein us in. We don't have a That's guest to rein us in. The energy's like... weird because the dynamics all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the game is played by two teams of seven players each. The teams are handed out seven balls each. Players attempt to stay in the circle and <laughs> land on or near the center point of the re arena without falling off. The first team to land all seven balls in the center point of the arena wins. Oh, okay. So it's okay. like uh, it's like fantasy lawn bowling. Yeah. I, I like to think of it like we're in the arena and there's maybe like a chalice or a ring high. 
Oh, fun. My camera froze. Crap. Oh, um, no. like, always in the most flattering positions. Um, you look like you're conjuring a spell, Eric. I am. Oh, I'm magic. conjuring the ball. I'm conjuring team. my first and last name. <laughs> <laughs> um, the wizards introduce themselves. Yeah. And I like, I like to think that we all go and you try and like block as everyone's trying to get it into like a tall pedestal in the center of the, in the, center of the ring. I love it. Um, There's like a raised sort of central platform. Yeah. That makes sense. All right, Jesse, ski us a ball. All right. So my friends hate me for playing ski ball. They do. It's degrading. Apparently. Oh, they hate you because now they have to play ski ball. They, you have yeah, to have a team of team. seven. It's so you and the seven. dwarves make seven. Oh, God. Not those seven I dwarves. Play ski ball. We're not dwarves, ideally. Ideally, are, we're wait, not dwarves. Noah, is the, are those the whoa, dwarves whoa, we're whoa, talking Jack. to? Dwarf races. Okay. <laughs> also, huh? <laughs> Is is this the dwarf we're talking to? Yeah. What? Wait, how do you? What's it? wrong with him, Jack? Well, <laughs> it looks like he's got like a tally mark above his left ear. That's how he keeps track of how many skis he's balled during the course <laughs> oh, of the game. Yeah, no. he, it's his, yeah, it's. And in this world, it's, a, it's, a it's a tallies a, of seven. It is a tool. It is a dwarf cultural tattoo. I love it, and and a Popeye sailor hat. And a Popeye sailor cap. <laughs> but it's like branded Popeye. Uh, <laughs> it's brilliant, handsome, uh, just, just, just very handsome. Thank you, Noah. <laughs> You're actually drawing Popeye on it. <laughs> you don't have to, <clears throat> but that's where we are. This is the world. This now. is where we're. At. This is what today is. <sighs> this is what not having a guest does to us. Genuinely. Hmm. I All like right. how you're fluctuating between him being shirtless and having like a <laughs> like a uh, tank top on. Well, they're from the College of Shirtitude, so their shirts just kind oh. of fluctuate. Shirt Gnostic. I they kind of the shirt them. Gnostic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really upset because I'm really upset because my phone for some reason doesn't want to update the like I can't get into the game anymore. Oh no! Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, what are we gonna do when Fox uh, Foxillion I, talks? To I us? have no idea. We'll do a quick. Post-season uh, recast. Uh, all right. I uh, well, we got we've got some text. Let's see all if right. it comes up. <laughs> oh wait. Nope. Nope. Oh, no. Come on, Vanita. You, me, and Foxalian, and we'll pick three of the dwarves to join us. That's a full <laughs> team. We all know you secretly love ski bowl. <sighs> Vanita smart sighs and mm. nods. I know. It's just it's frustrating when you're right. <laughs> With that, the five of you approach the dwarves. Wait! <laughs> we keep gaining members! <laughs> Vanita, Vanita, Vanita actually, he splits like a cell. Yeah. <laughs> Which one of you was undergoing my doses? We all just speak in perfect unison. I know. <laughs> oh. It's just frustrating when you're right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, Vanita. <laughs> All right, I think I think for safety, let's change the number so it All doesn't right, I will, I will change. Uh, oh gosh, where is it? The three of you approach the dwarves. With that, I mean, five, <laughs> three. <laughs> That's only six. It's okay. We're going to play handicap ski ball. We'll be down one person. That's that's uh, half the fun. All right. With that, the three. It's because Vanita is our secret weapon, guys. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Carry on. Vanita yeah, counts as two. She's gonna multiply, and then actually we have nine. <laughs> um, <laughs> all nine of you approach the dwarves. You, <laughs> you you approach the dwarves. You pick uh, you pick three who are excited to play. One of them is a very tall female, and the other is a very short male. And you wish the twa tallest dwarf wasn't out of the game, as he was very imposing. The five of you <laughs> enter the city gate. Oh, just like that. We're in the city now. Oh, great. We did it. Wait, so we're just going to gloss over our game of hey, ski ball? I, no, no, I'm no, no. holding up my beer. We yeah, finished. we finished something, hey, guys. We finished <laughs> ski ball. Thank you, Eric. No, no, you have no. to narrate what you're doing. I'm sorry, I don't know what it is. It's it's something in Zoom. It's not my camera, because I can open it in other settings, in other uh, uh, stuff. That's so Maybe. weird. 
Anyways, my takeaway from it is not that we skipped the ski ball game, but the whole how we got in oh, is that they were like, we were going to be part of the ski ball tournament in the city. Oh, I see. So we're going into the city to do ski ball, and then and we'll now be in we the have city. to play. Yeah. Okay. Right, that'll like be that. the activity that you get. I, oh. I like the idea as well that we're maybe that maybe that we're like they're like here, you know, make this shot, we'll let you in the city, and then we're like, great, let's get a team together, get a game going. Oh <laughs> boy! Just like, just get, just go, just get just in, go. just go. However, My God, how about this? We've entered the city. Everything's beautiful all around. King of Honest redeemed to do something stupid, a sort of inciting incident. An explosion happens in the town, setting everyone into a panic. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna do that, but first we're gonna start playing skee ball, and then we'll have let's, the let's explosion enjoy, interrupt it. Yeah. Let's let's enjoy the time in the festival a little bit before things go horrifically awry. Alternatively, we saved the explosion for the fireworks tonight, um, and have that be some sort of. It could be our uh, plot end of Act One uh, cliffhanger, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, we enjoy the party first. Um, we have text. Where where does it start? Uh, right after the five of you enter the city gate. Uh, oh, it's not on a new line for some reason. Yeah, this new format is. Yeah, because I did stuff. it in story. Oh, um, I see. Uh, the five of you approach the ski ball court and begin to play. The three dwarves trounce you, but the oh. five of you manage to win fairly handedly. <laughs> That's not. They were kicking our butt until they weren't. <laughs> Yeah, we really turned it around. Until we brought in the rule book and yeah. told them. And then we hit them with the rule book to knock them out. Well, uh, and now I'm convinced of your mag uh, magical abilities. Uh, says the tallest dwarf. <laughs> uh, and your uh, ski ball skills. Uh, what can we do to help you, folks? <laughs> you think for a moment. Wondering. What help you need exactly? An enthusiastic mm. scene partner. <laughs> <laughs> he gives you just as much energy as you take away. Look, I'm just I'm just here to work. I uh, <laughs> I watch the door. People go in and out. Um, I thought it'd be kind of fun to play some skee ball. Ball. But... It was. It was a bit fun. Yeah. Mm. Remind me. Uh, remind me of the name of this. The comet. What's this festival the called? Day oh. of the Comet Storm Festival. <laughs> the day of the comet It's a festival storm. celebrating the day of the comet storm. I see, I see. <laughs> Not the comet storm. The, the festival is more than one day. Yeah. <laughs> the day of the comet storm happened at some point in the past. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there was a day in which there was a comet storm, but instead of focusing on just the comet storm, we like to celebrate that whole day because it was a Oh, it was day. a pretty good day. Yeah, everyone a had a good day. Banger. I think it's a day where everyone felt today was a good day. And then a comet storm happened. We all said, maybe it's magic. Maybe it was just nice. Let's celebrate it. You should do this more often, guys. That's kind of nice. <laughs> I, I like that. It was just like a Sunday afternoon in July of 2007. And everyone was like, yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> Let's do this Let's again. make a day of it. <laughs> you I like say. That. Oh, sorry. Go oh, ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Go, go, go. I was going to say that Soup Slug Boy has pointed out we won Ski Ball because Ski Ball is a ball, and we're from the College of Roundness, so we have yeah. advantage. Hey, we might have cheated a bit. The round magic. Our party is jacked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Except for us. We have no muscle mass whatsoever. We're like a Pez dispenser. <laughs> the brains. This, is, this is the weirdest episode of Ninja Turtles I've ever seen. No. <laughs> Uh, I'm just waiting for uh, Yusagi or Jimbo to show up. It'd be great. All right, back all to right. the text. Yeah. Yusei. Well, thank you for helping us into the city. My friends and I were going to enjoy the day of the Comet Storm Festival before the fireworks tonight. Would you like to join us? Uh, mm, not much to do in the middle of the day. <laughs> so I uh, suppose we're in, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> he looks at you, <laughs> noticing your robes. Ah, uh, say, friend, are uh, you, you you a wizard? Uh, I can usually tell. If you look him over and notice a tattoo on his arm of a dragon breathing fire. <gasps> Ooh, Noah, quick. Do we think this tattoo of a dragon breathing fire is related uh, you to can the just keep, please. college? Oh, go ahead. 
maybe. I was going to say, add it, add it to this image because these portraits are so nice. You can just okay. add them to the right. I like seeing everybody. Okay. I'm just going to leave the call and come back quick, okay? Oh, okay. Oh. So long. All oh, my heads are going to mess up. Let's well, see how it goes. Drag me back to where I am when I... Oh, oh uh, sounds... now we're all large. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, in the meantime... Oh, never um... oh never mind. Sorry, Here he is already. What's up? All right. Oh, what? oh I was going to ask if... Uh, ah. That's the uh-uh. one. Any day now. Hey! Hey! hey. Uh, Everybody, uh, drink. Uh, we finished. We finished. We completed that. that. Yeah. This is an empty cup. The action is all that matters. All right. I, I'd like to either chat source or maybe you guys have an idea of what is the significance of this dragon breathing tattoo. Is this something we recognize, <gasps> maybe? Is it a good Ooh. thing or a bad thing? That's what maybe, I'm maybe, Ooh, that's maybe, fun. Chat, maybe, um, give us good or bad, and then maybe we can tell the AI to generate like a good or bad reason for it to be. Spud Wizard the, says uh, maybe he's in charge of the fireworks. Um, what were you gonna say before, Eric? I was like maybe maybe dragons always keep their debts, and now we're debted to them, so we always we now a wizard has oh, to always. No. Um, oh, he's for, indebted. No, we're indebted to him. Yeah, because he let us in. Oh no. We also have Ancient Fire Dragon that summoned the meteors in question. Um, I like Fireworks Handler, says King of Autumn. Owen, as uh, Koyovan says, it's a mark you read in one of your college books about ancient cults. Ah, the ancient I, cult of so fireworks. I typed into create world info and other. I said, they said type required dragon tattoo meaning. And it came up with the Kingsmen. Kingsmen are a group of elite warriors that serve as protectors for the dragon gods. They are the strongest and most revered warriors in the world. Each member of the Kingsmen is a master of their respective weapon and is extremely skilled in combat. Kingsmen garments are often decorated with dragons. So is that now part of the world info if I reference it? I could I could add it. Yeah, let's do it. Do it. This is cool. Why have we done this before? Yeah, this is a really cool idea. (laughs) I like that. Did it it's in the world info. Uh, so now all I'm going to say to him is uh, uh, that I see you're a member of the Kingsman, and let's see what the AI does with that. It might do something. Awesome. Yeah. That right. sounds great. Sorry, what was that? Was it bicep? Is that what it said? Uh, yeah. It's on his neck. Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah, it was on his arm somewhere. Uh, wow, actually, look at it doesn't the say where it is, so yeah, we can make a choice. He is. He is. What a dwarves unit. And dwarves My in this God. world are. Every, everyone's Jesus. a unit. Why is everyone a unit? <laughs> I don't know. They're all from the College of Fittitude, clearly. I like I like the fact that the dwarf isn't tall, so all of that like vertical movement went lateral instead. <laughs> yeah, he's just <laughs> wide. No. Wide. I like the cut of your roundness, dwarf. <laughs> 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 yes, this is this is how dwarves work in this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless him! Look at that. How does he move? <laughs> like. He's no <laughs> knees. Like with, with passion, Jack. With passion. Yeah. His ankles like connect directly to his really hips. Tango. Yeah. He's like a Lego man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, all all right. right, let's read on. <laughs> you say? Why, yes, I am. I am from the College of Roundness. I see from your tattoo that you are a member of the Kingsman. He smiles and shakes your hand. Yeah, I am. Uh, name's Draven. Soon. You've introduced everyone, oh, and you're making your okay. way to the shops. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> Never mind. I thought this was going to be like a, it's, it'll be a, a call to adventure or something. No. It'll be a Chekhov's like, tattoo, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> sure. Um, on the way there, you pass many people with the unmistakable mark of the King's Oh, they're tattoo. everywhere. Oh. Oh. <laughs> right. no, I thought this says, was a big deal. Says, Hello to Draven. You realize... This could be very good if we want to search. All right, what are we searching oh, for? Been so well connected. Oh, what are we searching for? What's a our good favorite time. thing to do? A favorite thing to do in the festival? I don't know. Well, uh, we do like to um, accomplish tasks. Oh, we had a we had a great list of activities at the festival. Chat between these, what do you like the best? Um, let's see: the hedgehog hunt, the blind sprouts gathering, the fabled turnip toss. One of these is our favorite. Of course, there's a firework display. But of those activities, which one do we want to go check out first? Mr. Turn it, Beat. says Sticky Stick Man. Sorry, go ahead. Mr. Risby says, Kingsman tattoo is quite popular and used to mean something. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember when it was cool. <laughs> yeah, I remember when it was cool. Yeah, 
Uh, <laughs> Blind Sprouts Gathering, Turnip Toss is Skee Ball. That's actually fair. It could be yeah. another name for it. Uh, Hedgehog Hunt from from uh, Owen. Ooh, this is a tough one. All right, we're getting we're getting some we're getting some lines from all of them. What do you guys think? Any, I I like the idea of a hedgehog hunt because that will take that could take us to different sections of the city to explore, right? As we're looking for this. Oh, thing. fun! Okay, let's do it. Let's do a hedgehog hunt. Nice. King of Autumn's on board with this as well, so I'm glad we chose it. You say. Well, Draven, perhaps you'd like to join Vanita and Foxlian and I at the hedgehog hunt. Draven looks up at you, a bit confused. Uh, are you sure you, you'd like that? The hedgehog oh, oh hunt is very... Uh, uh, intimate setting. <laughs> what? what do you do? <laughs> How are you he, hunting these hedgehogs? Well, you've got... The, you're in the sheets, and you're going through the sheets looking for the hedgehog. I guess it's all just euphemism. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. It's very interesting. It's, it's, it depends on where you're expected to hide the hedgehog. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. He and the others begin to walk away, leaving you with a decision to make. What? He didn't even say goodbye. He was like, oh, that sounds a bit. Oh, I dude. Know. Uh, I'm gonna leave. Guy, kid, do you slow your roll. I just, <laughs> I just met you. Uh oh. Uh, uh, sounds like a song 12 Days of Christmas AI Dungeon Carol. Oh my god. All right. Jesus. Oh, can we do that as our final song? Can we yeah, get that the AI to generate yeah, 12 yeah. days oh, of yeah. Christmas? Let's let's do that. All right, guaranteed that's our song today. Well spent. The 12 dungeons of Christmas. Oh, that's fun. They'll all be like sex dungeon, sex swing. This one's got a dragon in it. <laughs> all the dungeons. Oh yeah. Dragon dungeon. I'm trying one more time to get into the game. Oh, no. <laughs> Jackson, are you okay? Says Sticky Stickman. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm not. I've never felt more taken care of than today. <laughs> Aw, I hope that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to say. It really is. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, Eric. Oh, oh, oh if only. Oh. I... I wouldn't say uh, it's a good thing, no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I eat cookies for dinner. Sometimes well, I'm not voice again, anybody. Very late. <laughs> Game you say. Not want to well, oh. I came here to celebrate, so I'm off the hunt. Damn it. I'm off to hunt the hedgehogs in the hedgehog hunt. Vanita, sure come on. Meant to say hunt the hedgehogs. It's me, Vanita. Voxlian is the best at this. We'll make an excellent team, and I'm sure to win the grand prize of getting to light the fireworks at the end of the festival. Oh, well, uh, all right. <laughs> That's strange. No, no, no. You had your chance, mister. I, I <laughs> guess you you started to walking away. You were going to the hedgehogs. <laughs> oh, I'm clearly very disappointed in this <laughs> choice, but I won't say anything. Vanita is clearly disappointed <laughs> by your choice. You can tell because she doesn't even say anything. <laughs> But doesn't say anything. <laughs> the three of you, the three of you, leave to find the hedgehogs, leaving Thermos and Draven oh, at the wait. shop. We're Thermos. Wait, wait like that's we're you. Wait, we're Thermos. I feel wait. like we're melting. Can we? I think. Did the, we? Uh... I'm gonna update the pin. Oh, it says you are Thermos. Is it? Hmm. It does. Hmm. Oh, but we don't have a style hint in place. We that's should probably true. put one in. Do we not have a style hint? I put a style. We hint. don't. You, you yeah, failed. Dude. At the bottom, what's the mine style says hint? You don't. This is a young adult fantasy novel I put in. Oh, mine says style hint empty. You was a very yeah, I don't have one either. Like, gives a disc that's weird. Maybe oh. um, tell Jesse what it is so that maybe he can also have it for the typing. I, I just put uh, it, it's that that's the thing at the end of the pin, right? The uh, the thing at the very bottom. Yeah, the very bottom. Yeah, I said this is a young adult fantasy novel is what I put there. I just did okay. the same for thing. Some reason, yeah, normally it, it populates, but uh, oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, weird. It must be local for some reason right now. Yeah, I just having a tough time. I'm just going to delete. Use. I'm just going to say, let's sip to Hayes. I'm just going to say we leave to go find the hedgehog. Yeah, I think we can get rid of Draven. I feel like he's I, a, I think we a, can lose. Draven he's a comeback can... in the final <laughs> act kind of guy. You're dead uh, yeah, weight, Draven. Right, though, You're dead weight. You know what? I've, I've killed a lot of things as a kinsman. A kinsman. I, I don't need the uh, approval of three small children. I don't need a hedgehog on my conscience. 
Oh, those weigh on you the heaviest. It's the little noses. Ah. I'm assuming the hedgehog hunt isn't an actual, like, violence against hedgehog festival event. I'm assuming it's like a scavenger hunt. Yeah, I'm picturing, like, here's a bunch of hedgehogs. hedgehogs. We release them into the city. Go catch them and bring them back. Kind of thing. Maybe it's yeah. giant hedgehogs that hunt you. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> so, ah, danger. That's kind Soviet of fun. Russia. We got to use our magic, you know. Oh, God, right. We're wizards. <laughs> yeah. I feel like if we were to use our magic on a hedgehog, it would just, like, curl into a ball, though. Hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, it depends on the kind of magic and the kind of hedgehog. Maybe they're into that. Maybe maybe they like the magic tickle, Jack. I, okay. I'm sorry, that came out wrong. You, nah, I feel like... Uh, I feel like it came out exactly as you expected it to. Well, look, we're, we're all having a day. It might... I, I'm sorry, Ban 1P7. You you were such Aww. a joy to have in the, um, in, in the, in the world building. Hopefully we see you again. Yeah, thanks for coming by. The this stream will be up on our YouTube tomorrow morning, so you can catch the rest from here on out. I'm gonna I'm gonna wave at you so that you can find me in the thumbnail. Join me here. Okay. <laughs> Have a good night. <laughs> Spud Wizard says, but two AM is five hours away. Twitch band says it's fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Sticky Sickman says, no, silly. 2 a.m. is in 23 hours. Oh, um, uh, who's the person who's organizing the hedgehog hunt? Who's the person who's with there with the megaphone calling out, all right, step up for the hedgehog hunt? Shall uh, I generate no, them? Now you got to give or them should a we, megaphone. Or should we yes, pick please. one of our yeah, generated chat. characters? Or, or, chat, or, or chat could tell us what the name is. And yes, I chat, give yeah, us the chat, name. Give us the name. What's the name? I'm picturing like Boy, a no P.T. Yes. Barnum kind of guy in a weird hat being like, all right, step right up, that kind of thing. Catch your hedgehog hunting. Hedgehogs, Ooh. hedgehogs Jesse, to hunt, Jesse, right? if you'd like to continue doing my job, I, I'll gladly give you the pen. Sure. <laughs> You're going to have to throw it real hard from all the way over there, though. <laughs> all right, we have uh, Benny Groxon. His description is leader of the hedgehog hunt. Uh, John Johnson, Owen Wilson. <laughs> I mean, I feel like some of these are not usable. All right, we have Jay Benny Groxon, the, uh, oh, yeah, the first one that was there by Mysterious P. Benny yeah, is the leader it. of the Hedgehog Hunt, a sportsman and a wealthy man. He's a very greedy man and will do anything in his power to ensure that he gets the largest possible payout for his Hedgehog Hunt. Oh. He's oh. a very selfish man and cares very little for the well-being of his Maybe teammate. Maybe he's rigged it. He's, oh. He is too negative and does not care for his own safety. He's a very poor loser and will often blame his teammates for his failure. He's a very spoiled baby. The main weapon is his bow and arrow. <laughs> He's, uh, his second in command is a manservant and a rouge, <laughs> a, a rogue uh, called Pelop. Pelop. Oh, all right. So he's, all got, right. he's got his manservant there, like handing him arrows every time he fires on like a, a velvet <laughs> pillow. His golf like, caddy. <laughs> I was going to say this yeah. caddy. <laughs> Hello, I'd like the three eight scram, please. And uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yours is better. I like that. Yeah, I'll be right there, <laughs> sir. That's a troopy dog. All right, let's put him in the world because I've I've name let's dropped him it. in this prompt here. I, All right, I, nice. I, wait, just let me check. Make sure Benny Groxon is in the world. Excellent. Um, nice, Benny. Here he Welcome is, name dropped. Um. All right. Um. Uh, but doesn't say anything. The three of you leave to find the hedgehogs. You head towards the center square where students from all over the colleges have gathered. Oh, ah, it's, it's going. Have gathered, have gathered. Um, have gathered for the hedgehog hunt. It's the most popular event. A thousand hedgehogs will be released across the city, oh and whoever God. finds the most will get to light the fireworks at the end. That's so many hedgehogs. Uh, Usually just... we get about two hundred left. We get about oh, two hundred at the end of the day, and yeah. Well, look, let's be honest. Their carts are lost in people's houses. I'm just thinking about the fact that there's apparently fifty thousand college students at this event. So I don't. know. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, okay, okay. Who wants to be Benny Groxon? Oh, uh, uh, er, um. Actually, can I be Benny so that Jesse can be my <laughs> man servant? Yeah, let's do it. All right. <laughs> All right. Step right up, one and all. Calls out Benny Groxon, leader of the hedgehog hunt. Sitting with him on his two si are his two side kicks, Pippi O'Teeth and Roger Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> just just what? Roger Rabbit. What? 
Did you do yeah. this? I, no. Yeah, who, all I said yeah, was who, step up one and all calls out, calls out Benny Grox and oh, leader of the Hedgehog it. Hunt. <laughs> all right. And I wanted to I wanna, see what they sure. did. Yeah. I want to be Pippi Pippi o teeth. teeth. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's yours. Pippi o Teeth. <laughs> Je- uh, and uh, do you want to be Roger Rabbit? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> all right. The the idiot. Idiot. Are you ready? <laughs> you better be because the hedgehogs are. Let the hunt begin. The ah! three of them hold up their rattles each filled with the, ah! the brim with golden coins. There must be thousands of coins in there. How big are these rattles? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> also, that must weigh a ton. <laughs> My god. Everyone's really jacked in this world, though. This we know the, that's true. This is the <laughs> swallest world that we've ever created. That's why they're all jacked, because their rattles are so huge. <laughs> you start as a baby. Um, you start as a baby. baby. <laughs> Uh, there must be uh, the crowd surround, is surrounding the three begins to cheer as the gate opens up, releasing the hedgehogs into the city. <laughs> oh, where are they gonna be? Who knows? It's me, PT Barnum, knock up Benny Groxon. and that's my name. I had to check my my card here. <laughs> it's me, Benny Groxon. I had to look at ben my underwear, Croxon. see what the name said. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, me, Benjamin G. Roxon. <laughs> you say. Come on, team! The three of you cheer loudly as the gate opens up. You can see the hedgehogs Ray. scattered all over the city now. The crowd begins to disperse, everyone heading off in different directions. All right, team. We need to get moving before everyone else grabs all the hedgehogs. Vanita and I will head through the marketplace and meet you at the University District. Good plan, everyone. All right. All right. <laughs> but, uh, and sure. go. I mean, doesn't that just leave Foxillian by herself? Let's split up, gang. <laughs> <laughs> Search for hedgehogs. I like how, because Noah can't get the text, Foxillian has been silent this <laughs> entire time. Like, conveniently <laughs> hasn't said anything. We're abandoning her right <laughs> now. She's That's a strong so, silent oh, type from the I'm College so of Fiddity. I'm so upset Fiddity. that it won't work. Oh, no. I've tried yeah, the, College I've of tried I've tried the game code like three times. Um, uh, in the meantime, we actually oh. have two do something stupids back to back. One from Mysterious P saying that Vanita has a well prepared, overly complicated strategy on how to catch a lot uh, of hedgehogs. Yes. And King of Autumn says one of the hedgehogs goes inside the local power and gets drunk. I want That's how we hedgehog. catch it. I, I want to be the hedgehog. <laughs> that gets drunk. Oh, is there a talking a hedgehog. hedgehog in this line? I think they're all talking hedgehogs. Oh, brilliant. Then they're yours. Talking hedgehog away. It's a living. You, Vanita, uh, you, Vanita, and you. That's, that's, that's my fault. I screwed up the parsing there. You, Vanita, and you. Is Foxillion there? All Maybe three of you. All three of you. All three of you. <laughs> <laughs> right through the marketplace, surging for hedgehogs amidst the crowded streets. The marketplace is filled with people from all walks of life, searching for the perfect gifts for someone. Oh. There are shops selling everything from goat meat to live songbirds. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Those are two different that's kind things. Of nice, though. <laughs> Um, the marketplace is is a huge circle, and you come out on the other side of it. Hey, we went full circle, guys. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah we finished yeah. the market. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's when you see the three figures that you've been looking for. There are several hedgehogs sitting in a pile next to them. They are clearly tired, but they haven't given up hope yet. Oh, uh, we also have it draw something stupid. And hey. Ben would like you to draw Sprout. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Sprout is our main character. Thermos Sprouts. Oh, okay. Um, All right. Yeah. So get us a nice action shot of him <clears throat> sprinting along. Could right. Maybe as we dive to grab these hedgehogs in a yeah. pipe. Can we, can we get them to talk? I really want to hear them talk. First, we have to enact our well-prepared and overcomplicated plan. Uh, oh, of plan. course. Vanita, right. Vanita That's has, important. Yeah. I, I also think the hedgehogs should be, like, really facetious. <laughs> like, really annoying, quippy, one-liner hedgehogs, which well, uh, makes well, everybody really Well, that's a little really bit difficult, a little bit difficult to, to plan, Jack, considering an AI is writing the dialogue. That's true. <laughs> Hear that, an AI? Listen up. I, I hey, could ge- you I listen could to ge- us pretty well so far. I could generate the sardonic hedgehogs of astrology. Would you mind that's doing that while crazy. he types? That's the name of that's the name of my new band. Uh, the actually, sardonic yeah. hedgehogs. Um, 
Sardonic head. Pause. It just sounds like a really sad Sonic ripoff. <laughs> Sardonic <laughs> the Hedgehog. <laughs> Why is that not a thing? I'm sure it's a thing. If you have anything, comma, the Hedgehog, I'm sure it exists. All right, the Sardonic Hedgehogs of Astrologia are born with a sardonic sense of humor. They naturally feel that they, have be that they are being treated like a joke and are therefore designed <laughs> to fight a never-ending war against the humans who will try to destroy them. <laughs> They are commonly unable to read the emotions of others and instead rely on their own ability to feel emotions for those among them. Sardonic hedgehogs are born with a natural ability to manipulate the energy of nature, and they are able to perfectly imitate the shape of whatever they have eaten in the past. Their natural weapon is a toxic version of the natural weapons of the humans they have eaten. Oh my god, they eat people? It's in the world now. They're there. Excellent. All right. Well, I, I gave Vanita some lines because I felt like she wanted to say something. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. Um, all right, where where are we? Um, uh, Vanita looks at you and grins. All right. She says, I have a well-prepared and overly complicated strategy on how to catch these hedgehogs. You knob that one that's clearly been sitting... Knob. <laughs> no. Sorry. <laughs> you nab. Nab. Mm. That one that's oh, clearly oh, that. been yeah, sitting that. in the bar drinking while I... Grab a ramp, three pairs of roller skates, and a large tub of glue. The plan is foolproof. You nod and quickly begin heading towards the hedgehog at the bar. The hedgehog is clearly tired and has already spent most of its spikes. <laughs> is that what it uses for <laughs> currency? <laughs> oh, no. You like a bald hedgehog. <laughs> Just drunk out of his mind. You walk over to it slowly, trying to find the right <laughs> moment to strike, and that's when you feel a sudden pain in your foot, and you fall face first into the ground, spinning several times as you do so. It takes you a minute for you to realize that you've been bitten by a snake! <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> what a turn, I guess. Oh, those snakes of... Wherever we are, what's the town we're called in again? Uh, Splendor. Splendor. This the splendorous snakes of Splendor. <laughs> uh, Soup Slug Boy would uh, also redeem to draw something stupid. No, whenever you're kind of done with this, because it's a great piece of art, and I really want to see it. Um, and they would like to see Sardonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I can take it or leave it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you say. Oh, no. The ancient ally of the sardonic hedgehogs, the splendorous snakes. <laughs> the hedgehog looks scared for a moment and then quickly catches on. Uh, oh, this is you. No, Eric. <laughs> oh, shit. What's his? Uh... Oh, yeah. The snakes. They've been our allies for several centuries. <laughs> I must you not have noticed like you there. Please allow me to introduce myself. <laughs> <sighs> I am. Darn it. Oh. I'm King Harold. <laughs> wow, the King Harold, here in the flesh, drunk in a bar. A hedgehog sighs and twirls his mustache, which has several knots and loops tied in it. <laughs> <laughs> is this Harold or who is saying this next line? <laughs> Maybe it's me. I, I think it's you. I right. think it's. I, I don't it's, suppose it's... you would want to help me out of this situation. I'm just gonna press enter. Let's see what Harold says to us. That's so funny. I like how it even bought it. Like, you started doing this character choice, and then I saw the word sigh in brackets, and I was like, this is amazing. This is the best thing. That's you astounding. Sorry. You look around and see a large crowd is formed in a semicircle around you, just staring at the tragic scene unfolding before them. You walk up to the hedgehog and speak with a low, gravelly voice. All I want is your jacket, social reform, and guaranteed seats for animals in the government. The hedgehog looks this surprised. Is the plan. Get him! Vanita, go! <laughs> you, you've taken him by surprise <laughs> by appealing to you all, know, right, all of that, his wants and doing. needs. And we're going to dump the bucket of glue on him, take him in with the roller skates, and go. Soup Slug Boy says King Harold is the main character. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make sense? Is this plan stupid? Yes. No, it's an, it's yeah, overly well, complicated, <laughs> which is exactly what we needed. All right. What do you think, Eric? 
Yeah, I mean, I do feel like we're at the risk of melting away from a main plot. It's okay. We can walk away from it soon. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right now we're just enjoying the festival. We're at 9 o'clock, so I feel like we're going to, you know, catch the hedgehogs and whatnot, and then event, the explosion, whatever that may be. Kind of a nice way to tie things off. I like his crown, Noah. Oh, yeah. oh my King God. Harold. King Harold <laughs> drowning his sorrows. Oh, oh, no. Oh, look at him, though. Oh, he's so little and so round. So cute. <laughs> oh, no. He's just hanging. The, the other snake is just emerging from a tankard next to Yeah, it, it was also there. It's his bodyguard. Oh, no. It's Who is going to know this is going to happen? Harold's bodyguard, the snake. <laughs> it was amazingly could, he have, could the snake smaller. have sunglasses? Because <laughs> he's the bodyguard. Because he's like a, a bouncer. He's the bodyguard. And an earpiece. <laughs> oh, great. A little coily bit that goes all the way down. It's like another smaller snake that whispers in his ear. <laughs> uh, the package is drinking. The package is drinking. <laughs> we have a small meerkat-like creature diving at the king. Should I bite? Should I bite? <laughs> uh, yeah, I've bitten the small meerkat creature. Uh, he's in my mouth right now. Currently undeterred, but uh, we'll see where this goes. <laughs> He's but not talking to anyone. He just likes to keep people updated. The thing I've ever drawn. Well, all, you, all you're hearing is... <laughs> yeah, he gets that little tongue tickling in his ear. <laughs> uh, bodyguard, we're only getting static here right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, here we go. Oh, there's so much right. text. Uh, oh, God, it's still going. I may have got a bit overboard. <laughs> The hedgehogs look surprised. Suddenly, right on cue, Vanita zooms past her. Uh, Watch out. Here I come. Past on her roller skates, napping King Harold as he languishes his uh, political ennui, <laughs> dunking him in the tub of glue. Well done, Vanita. One hedgehog down, 999 to go. Before you can celebrate your victory, a sudden explosion rocks the entire city as people begin to scream and run in every direction. What a turn! It seems that the hedgehog hunt has been disrupted. You have found Astrologia. You have to find Astrologia, and fast. <laughs> Look down. <laughs> I found it! We finished something. Congratulations. You've gained an item. <gasps> King Harold's jacket. <laughs> 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 he had a jacket, apparently. <laughs> I loot the body. What do I wear. find? <laughs> His jacket, I don't know. I fucking, it's, uh, it's got patches on it that say, All hail the king. Yes, Sticky Stickman, I think, is asking the question that we all want to know, which is that, what does the hedgehog look like in the jacket? Yeah, you gotta put the jacket <laughs> on him, Noah. <laughs> well, I've got, why do I have to draw so many hedgehogs? <laughs> uh, let's, let's keep reading on real quick. Uh, I think it's our main person. Oh, come on. We can get out of here through these tunnels. This way. But what about Astrologia? She's her own wizard. She can take care of herself. This way. You begin to run into the tunnels after trying several doors until you find one that isn't locked. I feel like we could step to Hayes. Some of this doesn't make sense. I, I think yeah. we could change uh, Astrologia to Foxlian because you're concerned about going back to the for our friend, right? If we're trying yeah. to escape oh, the madness. Oh, that's cool. Nice. That's cool. Let's, let's keep King Harold's jacket. And, um... We do have a backstory corner redemption. Mysterious backstory. P wants to know about King Harold's jacket. Why is it so important? Oh, Eric, any ideas? <sighs> it's just that complicated to explain, guys. All right. If I have to explain it, I think that King Harold <laughs> can explain why he got his jacket. Um, I was cold one day. I was walking down Main Street... Passed it through a shop. Walked into the thrift shop. I looked around for a while. There's some Lionel Richie records that was kind of cool. I thought about buying them, but like I don't really play records anymore. I usually listen to Flack Files. It's kind of fun. Anyway, I, and then I bought this jacket, and then I left the thrift store, and then, then I wasn't cold anymore. <laughs> Thanks, Harold. Everyone in the castle says it looks really King good in it. I mean, it looks pretty dope. <laughs> Frankly, it's a cool looking jacket. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't mean, like, that's a pretty cool looking jacket. 
I will say, how does he wear it around the spine? So they're like holes cut in yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's like a it's cheese the, crater. Yeah, no, it's it's the back of it. It's not. Even, it's it's he put it on when he was trying it on at the thrift store, and all the spikes just went, <laughs> just popped through, just like ripped it open. He's like, well, I, I, all right. All right it it sounds to me like he has two sleeves that he wears on either <laughs> side, <laughs> like a kind of reverse vest, if you will. Yeah, there's vest. like little. <laughs> Just coverage hey, Jack, of the arms, a, a but not reverse, on the chest. A reverse vest is just a hedgehog jacket, if you really think about it. You got me there. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Are we doing some edits, Jesse? I don't know what you're up to. Uh, I'm just trying to seed, like, one kind of thing before we... Because this feels like a uh, an act break. This We had an explosion that happened. Oh, right, right. And we're keeping all the other stuff about doors. Oh, well-timed. All right, go for it. Ah, uh, you run to the tunnels after trying several doors until you find one that isn't locked. You and Vanita hide behind the door and you begin to plan your next move. This is Vanita. Vanita says. says. All right, sorry, I got dialogue. I was too busy playing. Yeah, usually you have music. something to say, but like, All right, so, you know, I like let's that you're trying to grow. Uh, sorry, uh, where's the text? We uh, should. Uh, we should. It's about, I don't know, like uh, 20 lines up or oh. something. Well, we should get to the university head office and see if we can find out what happened. Venita says quietly. All right, let's quietly. go. The two of you begin running quickly, quietly through the halls until you happen upon a group of four guards standing around a broken window. Ah, oh, shit, we gotta go. No, you, you, you say... Oh, shit! I'm sorry, that's your line. That's not oh, mine. shit, we gotta go! <laughs> You say to Vanita before noticing you've never sworn before, and she's... <laughs> I've even censored it myself! You turn around and realize she has been knocked out cold by another god with a flashbang! Whoa! With a flashbang! Oh, but a flashbang's a spell in this universe. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Flash! Ah! <laughs> Thanks. I like to think it's a it's a it's a combined spell where two wizards have to go together and they put their hands together and one goes Yay. flash and the other goes bang <laughs> yeah combine Whoa, our powers our powers combined <laughs> we've knocked you the fuck out are we uh... our powers combined you're not the fuck. <laughs> you're unconscious are we <laughs> Sorry, are, are we gonna leave it there with us at our lowest. Our friend um, missing. Could we get knocked out? Feels like out we need we need like something? yeah. Let's get, let's, let's, out. let's get knocked out too. Yeah. Maybe I'm the worried that'll kill us. <laughs> well, you let's know. Let's find out. We also have for later in the story, redeem something stupid, stupid King of Autumn, Roy Masween, Vanita's rival appears some, at some point later. I'm gonna save that. Maybe to help rescue us. <laughs> that's, the, that's the most. That's the most like. You know, you know, like, you know, creased brained, like, rival move to be like, hey, yeah. I'm saving hey, you. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> it looked like you needed hey. a little bit of help. It looked yeah. like you were in a rough See spot. See how better I am? See how I'm yeah. free and you are not? Don't worry. <laughs> it's it's not much of a, a burden on me. I'm pretty cool. Hi. Ooh. Game suggestion, Sticky Stickman says, everyone should give a word to make a spell, and we have to <laughs> describe what it does. Oh, that's fun. I like that. That's kind of fun. I have a, I have a little bit of a trivia game lined up here, but maybe we'll play that uh, um, uh, later on if we want to take another little break at some point. All right. Uh, you turn around and realize she has been knocked out of a cold by another guard with a flashbang. The other two guards place their palms together. Flash! Yells what? <laughs> Bang! Bang! <laughs> Yell <laughs> Yells the other. two others, and then <laughs> they go, "Oh <laughs> shit! Sorry, no, you you go ahead. You you do the bang, and I'll, I'll uh, sorry, I did it last time. Guys, we, we practiced this for hours. Uh, <laughs> a no. flashbang spell. This is why I hate being the third wheel. <laughs> Knocks you unconscious. You wake up in a cell with Vanita and King Harold. Oh, King Harold's back. Ah, <laughs> oh. where are we? Asks King Harold, <laughs> a booming voice answers. <laughs> the animal control offices, animal abusers, and animal torturers oh, like yourselves are all sent here. You're probably wondering why I gathered you all together in the same room to form a supergroup, right? 
<laughs> Wait, how much of that was you? What? <laughs> All I said was we get knocked unconscious. All right. Uh, <laughs> you hear laughter echo through the office. The laughter stops when the speaker is questioned. I like. I know what they meant by supergroup, but I like to imagine that they're forming like Cream, the supergroup, <laughs> a band. Like, yeah, they're forming a band, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Um. <laughs> this is dumb. I yeah, we, yeah. Can we yeah. just yeah. drink to forget. Should we just retry? It's yeah. dumb, but yeah, let's retry. <laughs> it's the Avengers. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. The other guards play together. Flash, bang, carry on. Ah, uh, you wake up to a splitting headache and realize that you are hanging upside down. <gasps> you feel groggy and lose <clears throat> grip of the chains that you are hanging that are hanging you up, falling onto your hard stone onto the hard stone floor with a loud thud. Oh shit! I hope that isn't a hangover I'm experiencing. <laughs> da 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 da. da. <laughs> You stand up and see King Harold sitting at a throne like chair with several court jesters and ladies. And, ladies. and he goes, hey, I make the jokes around here, kid. Hey, hey. I were in prison, but that doesn't mean I can't live at large. <sighs> Everyone thinks they're a comedian. <laughs> Are we keeping this That's one, too? I feel like um, this is, I feel like this we is should. This is pretty, yeah. No, let's what do it again. again. Okay. All right. One yeah. more try. <laughs> Trying to forget. These are these are the things that we're, feel, that we're dreaming while mm. we're knocked out. When you wake up, you find yourself strapped to a chair with a man sitting in front of you wearing an incredibly <laughs> fake-looking rodent mask. This <laughs> frontier teeth are filed into sharp face. It's actually really insensitive considering your rodent ass. It's true. Yourself. I don't know how you feel about this. You say. Who are you? Where did you come from? What are you doing here? Go sit in the corner and think about what you've done while I interrogate this one. The first guard orders the other one before turning back to you. Are we going to leave it here? Is this yeah, okay let's, let's leave it here. All right. I need time to think about how we're writing <laughs> ourselves out of this corner. Or is this also stupid? No, I imagine they're referring, to, like they're about to interrogate Vanita, and they're saying to us, love- hey, you sit there and wait, we'll get to you later. I love the idea that you wake up in an interrogation room and you've woken up to the interrogators bickering. Yeah. And the last <laughs> thing that <laughs> Who are we going to interrogate first? Hey, you go sit in the corner and think about what you've done while I interrogate this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, put the ma- give me the mask. It's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Virtual Muffin's here. Hey, hey Virtual Muffin. Evening. Hey, good evening, my friend. Thanks for joining us. Uh, all right, everybody, got a bit of a trivia game today, as per always. We've arrived at the end of season one of AI Dungeon Crawlers. My phone just turned it off, so I can't read the rest of what I wrote. And what a journey it's been. <laughs> I'm so happy to have shared it with all of you guys, as you can tell, because I wrote this exact sentence down three hours ago. To commemorate such a momentous occasion, I've gathered some of the most famous endings, the very last sentences of some iconic books. Yes. It's up to you to decipher their origins. Shout them out if you know them. I'll give you the sentence. Um, and then I've got I've got three three clues for each one, getting more and more specific. If you can get it on just a sentence, you get three points, and less and less as time goes on. You all set to give her a go? Yeah. Let's go. Question number one. It is not often that someone comes along who is a true friend and a good writer. Charlotte was both. Charlotte's Web. Oh. Hey, that's the one. That's Charlotte's the Web second play I was ever in in my life. Aw, well, lovely. Nice. Three points to you, Jesse. Yay. Here's question number two. And so farewell from your little droog and to all the others in the story, profound shooms of lip music burr, and they can kiss my sherries. But you, oh my brothers, remember sometimes that little Alex that was. Amen. And all that cow. Is it Wind in the Willows? No. No. I was worried this one would be too obvious. Can you read it one more time? Again? Yeah. And so farewell from your little droog, and to all the others in this story, profound shooms of lip music burr, and they can all kiss my sherries. But you, oh my brothers, remember sometimes thy little Alex that was. Amen. And all that cow. Here's your first clue. It's published in 1962. Uh, it's such a Here's weird... another one. Yeah. I know. Themes of good and evil, free will, and the duality of the ultimate reality. Is it Clockwork Orange? 
That is the one. I was going to say, the weird there. language. Yeah, it has to be clever. Yeah, it's, that's the one. I've never Roots actually read Alex. the book. That's yeah. where I was recognized. It's, a, it's a hard one to read, but it's it's quite fun. I had to make like a glossary of all the words as they came up. I'll be frank. I wasn't really expecting I wasn't expecting sh- sh- Clockwork Orange following, After Charlotte's following Web. Charlotte's <laughs> yeah. Web. To be fair, yeah, I'm sure setting we... a bit of a precedent. He was here. looking at them alphabetically, and he got to C and was like, all right. <laughs> all right, sure. <laughs> all right, here's the next one. Uh, that's two points for Jesse. Yes. Uh, it's funny. Don't ever tell anybody anything. If you do, you start missing everybody. All right, published in 1951. And I'll read it one more time. It's funny. Don't ever tell anybody anything. If you do, you start missing everybody. Published in 1951. Here's your next clue. Themes of dissociation, the pains of growing up, and the phoniness of adulthood. Oh, it's, um, oh, it's not. Catcher, catcher in the Rye. That's the one! Oh. Well done, Noah. That's two points for you. Another C, I see. It's, oh, wait, I'm sensing a theme, actually. <laughs> I promise they're not in alphabetical order. <laughs> but they Ooh. all start with C. They all start <laughs> with C. All right, here's the for next crawlers. one. But that is the beginning of a new story. The story of the gradual renewal of a man. The story of his gradual regeneration. Of his passing from one world into another of his initiation into a new, unknown life. That might be the subject of a new story, but our present story has ended. Hmm. I'll give you a hint. Published in 1866. 66? Yeah, 1866. A good year. (laughs) Hell of a year for literature. All right, here's another clue. Themes of alienation, nihilism, and of a Superman. Oh, uh... Oh, is it um, Utopia or? No. Nope. Um, Good guess though. 1866. Yeah, I think I. Um, um, it's not Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. No. No. Uh, I will give you this. It follows. Of oh, Mars. Do you want to give another? <laughs> sorry, uh, Eric. Did you have a guess? No, go. All right. Uh, I'll give you this hint. Follows the anguished journey of Rodion Rashkilinikov in Saint Petersburg. Oh, is it? Um, Oh shit, I forget all my Russian literature. It's written by Dostoevsky. Mysterious P has guessed crime and punishment and seems pretty convinced. That's correct, it's crime and punishment. Also, I didn't realize they all started with a C, Uh okay? Uh Uh-huh. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory (laughs) says Sticky Stigman. (laughs) Chat gets a point, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. All right, friends, I got one more. I promise this one doesn't start with the letter C. (laughs) Here it is. This stone is entirely blank. The only thought in cutting it was of the essentials of the grave, and there was no other care than to make this stone long enough and narrow enough to cover a man. No name can be read there. Frankenstein? No. Good guess, though. It published in 1862. It's pretty right freaking metal. Uh... Do you want me to read it one more time? Yeah. This stone is entirely blank. The only thought in cutting it was of the essentials of the grave, and there was no other care than to make this stone long enough and narrow enough to cover a man. No name can be read there. 1862, here's your next hint. Themes of love and compassion, social injustice. 1862. Yep. Othering Heights, that's... No. Not, but I know. (laughs) Just putting something out there. I'll say this, it's a profoundly long book. James, uh, Ulysses? <laughs> no. That makes way too much sense to be Ulysses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 1862. Uh, um, all right. For one point, it became a beloved musical in 1980. Little Women. 1980? Yeah. Not Little Women. <laughs> <laughs> would have been a very different Beloved. Little Women. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, what's happened to you? <laughs> is it Les Miserables? Is, is it big Not enough Not so to little now, <laughs> are you, woman? It is. It's Les Mis uh, by Victor Hugo. That is yeah. Yeah, very long. Yeah, well done, Jesse. Look at you. I'm surprised I knew my voice. books that well. Yeah, all right. All right, Jesse, you want to give us a quick little recap of the story so far before we dive into Act 2? Absolutely. Also, congrats, uh, Mysterious P, nailing it with Crime and Punishment. That yeah. made me smile. Well done, dude. All right, carry on. Well, we are Thermos, a wonderful stout from the College of Roundness. And with our friends Vanita and Foxlian, we are here at the, oh God, what's the name of the festival? The, the, 
the day of the day comet, of the comet storm. storm. Day of the comet storm. <laughs> Unfortunately, the lineup was huge, but we managed to get in by befriending some dwarves and challenging them to a game of skee ball. One of them was incredibly wide. Look at him there, his mustache. Unfortunately, he did not want to join us on the hedgehog hunt, so we set off on the hedgehog hunt without him. Vanita had an incredibly complex plan that involved uh, <laughs> a large tub of glue, some roller skates, and some strange conversations with a hedgehog named King Harold. We took his jacket, we nabbed him, but before we could finish the game, there was a massive explosion. All of our friends seemed to have disappeared, perhaps knocked unconscious. We, too, were knocked unconscious by a flashbang. And here we are in a strange new location with guards interrogating us. And we've got to get to the bottom of just what is going on. All right. Act two, my friends. Let's dive in. You say. Please, we just want to help. There's panic outside. An explosion happened. Let us go. Seems reasonable. The explosion was the diversion, and the guards in this room were killed before it went off. It was supposed to be loud enough to draw everyone's attention, while our real objective was quietly killed. But you had to go and get in the way. So tell me, who are you? What do you want? We're just students. We were at the festival, and then there was an explosion, uh, uh, and we got lost, and, and... <sighs> Quiet. Okay. I hate children. <laughs> That's why I'm Can trying I to blow the up these now? schools. I Shut up, the mask. Greg. <laughs> That's really quiet in the you corner. Think about, you think about what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> you don't start with thumbscrews, Greg. You work up. That was day one. Day one, best. Greg. It's, it's the best part. No, no, for you. <sighs> Look, he's very solutions oriented in his torture. He's, um. <laughs> <laughs> we got some more. Um, gee, um. The man, ye quiet. The man yells before turning to one of his guards. Find out who they are, and if they have any connections to anyone. The guard nods and responds and leaves the room with your friends. Now it's just you and the rats. Well, people cosplaying as rats, I'll point out. I think one of the rats' names says... So, what's your name? The Thermos Alcorn. Wow, it actually got our name right and added stutters? That's amazing. Whoa. That's pretty cool. You struggle to think of a name on this spot. <laughs> <laughs> your yes, panic mine. gets the better of you. Uh, P. <laughs> Tier Griffin. <laughs> that, don't, that's say thermos, really don't say thermos. Don't say thermos. Don't say thermos. The thermos <laughs> Alcorn. Damn it. <laughs> ah! You can see it slowly gets constructed. That's actually really funny. I'm just going to hit enter. <laughs> yeah, do it. AI is very clever today. Oh my goodness. So now it's oh there we go. Uh alright, the uh, rat says. Hey, Alcorn, huh? How old are you? <laughs> you first you respond. S -s -s seventeen, I think. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> <laughs> He's really nervous, all right? I just love the attitude of, don't tell him your age, don't tell him your age. 17, fuck. I, I think. <laughs> Show <laughs> some <laughs> doubt. <laughs> yeah, there we go, pull the wool uh, over their eyes. You say. Well, in stout years at least, I suppose in human years I'm 29. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it! Stop giving them all this information! <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, I was wrong, must complete task, be correct. All right. The man stares at you in shock. You're 20. You look like you're 17. Oh, uh, thank you, I guess. God <laughs> just shakes his head in disappointment. Tough man. It's always the same with you guys. You think you're so much better than everyone else. You get drunk and have benders whenever possible. I've had it up to here with your kind. I'm also racist. Oh, no. <laughs> That's why I wear this mask. <laughs> See how ridiculous you look? 
You say? Can I go now? <laughs> no! This room is soundproof. There's no way out. You think I let you go after insulting my height, telling me that I have a small genital? Oh, uh, I didn't say that. <laughs> you interrupted while <laughs> thinking. The god not. Uh, you didn't, huh? Well, it was implied. <laughs> it's always implied. <laughs> well, I think you have a lot to unpack uh, with yourself, sir. Um, so I really can go now. No! Now tell me. Who are you, really? What do you want? Can the other guard come back and be like, you better not be telling him about your genitals. <laughs> <laughs> We've had this conversation Say so many times. times. It's not always about your genitals. <laughs> okay, I have a question Simply about Lawful says, the hell did I just walk into? <laughs> Sorry, hey, Simply Lawful, what's up, what? Noah? What is, what is the ask. name of these two guards, just by the way? Because I'm going to make that moment happen. He comes in and this, goes, Gary, this, what are you doing? Or whatever. This one's Robin name is Dave. Greg. I want it to be Greg. <laughs> Greg, okay. for sure. And give us the other one, chat. And Noah, please. Um, I was going to say, because I, I don't have the text. How was it written? Was it written singular or was it was it in the plural? It was single genital. <laughs> it was I have a small a genital. small genital. <laughs> but it's genital ellipses. We could have cut him off before he got to the S. Yeah, before he hit the S. And to be honest, this guy has a hard time with the letter S anyways. It's the pointy teeth. It makes it hard for the tongue to reach in. Uh, we got Camille. Um, let's see. The AI really nails down a racist character. Um, let's see here. Yeah, all we have is Camille so far. Greg and Gerg. Gerg. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see here. Um, uh, the other god returns and snaps at the other. Greg! He snaps. Always with the genital talk. What have I told you about the- Go sit in the corner and think about <laughs> what you've done! <laughs> Greg looks ashamed and sits in the corner. The guard once more turns to you. Okay. It would seem you've gotten yourself into some trouble, Mr. Alcorn. Is this the good cop, bad cop, bad cop but the bad is... cop talks about his own genitalia? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate you, you and your kind. You insulted me. <laughs> Small yeah. genitals. He has, he has a lot to unpack Greg. from high school. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Greg. <laughs> You say? Yes, I see that. Perhaps if you let me go, I could help us all get out of trouble, however. The guard thinks for a moment, and then steps back with a sigh. <laughs> the rat looks at him angrily. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> are you letting him go or not? Shut up! <laughs> it's obvious this kid is smarter than we are. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> he managed. To fool, to, to fool us into thinking he was a 17-year-old stout wannabe. Are you saying this is a real person? <laughs> he turns back to you. <laughs> Simply Lawful says, what is this story? Great question. I'd like to know. Um, we, you know we'd all like to know. We <laughs> well, And we'll get there. We'll tell you when we know. <sighs> Sorry. But we need to go with our gut on this one. I guess. <sighs> You want to go or not? <laughs> no one else at the, in this. No one else is looking at this situation. So, so you speak up. Well, if we release him, meaning me, he'll just go right back <laughs> into danger. I think he, meaning me, can help us, though. Hmm. Hey, the guards look at one another and try. Yeah, right. uh, well, <laughs> 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 these guys are idiots. <laughs> Now I feel like I'm from the College of <laughs> 10,000 Tongues. I've just talked my way out of this one. I'm also here. <laughs> I'm also <laughs> We don't know why this is happening. We don't know why the explosion <laughs> was. We don't know We know that happened. they're involved. They, they had an assassination target or something, and the explosion was a distraction. They told us that in their early monologue. Yeah, but all we know um, really about them is that they hate stouts for some reason. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Let's <laughs> dive in a little bit. We should actually, we spent a lot of time here. Let's figure out what's going on. Yes, Soup, please, Soup please so I know where to says, point this next. Soup right. Slug Boy says they're like Disney villains. They really are. We're like the yeah, bat, the sidekicks. Yeah, like them and jets them, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Distracting them with genitals when you're from the school of roundness makes sense. Except they distracted themselves. 
<laughs> yeah, the great Disney Disney villain trope of bringing up their <laughs> genitals. Intense, the deep seated <laughs> racism and <laughs> genital fixation. <laughs> Uh, oh, God. Freud wrote all right, all right. The gods look at one another and shrug. The gods stand aside and let you pass. You breathe a sigh of relief. Thankful that right. Vanita taught you a thing or two about talking your way out of a tricky situation. The race, you race out of the room, searching for a sign of your friend. As you rush through the hall, something tells you that you're going the wrong way. The school is laid you're out. Going in a the loop. wrong way. Oh, also, we accomplished something, right? We escaped. Oh, we got out. Hey. Oh, hey! All right. Hey, well done. Drink. Still an empty cup. Um, are we in the College of Roundness right now? That would I make sense are, if yeah. it's all like a big round circle. That makes sense. Okay. The school is laid out in a loop with different subjects taught in respective circles. One loop goes from kindergarten to 12th grade, while another <laughs> takes freshman to senior, and a third covers liberal arts to science. <laughs> You're oh, that's how like grades work, loop. right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna. I can't wait to graduate senior and graduate onto liberal arts. <laughs> science, yeah. Uh, are you in liberal arts or science? Uh, <laughs> you're currently on the outer loop, which houses the junior and senior classes. Hmm. All right. All right. Um, I still feel like. I feel we, like we need a goal we, here. We need to yeah, reach need the to place know. to save the explosion. But yeah. We need to. We need to know what they're doing. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm very lost. The narrator doesn't understand what's going on, but he's loving the ride. <laughs> he's, he's, he's got an octopus that wants to fight him, and he's okay. I'm on board. All right, let's 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 think for a second. Um, an explosion happened at the festival as a big distraction, according to these guards, so they could take out their target. You get knocked out, brought to the school. Is the target at the school, and they were keeping you here? Are they trying to kill the headmaster? Um... Maybe something to do with the comets themselves or the fireworks. The fireworks are were the big thing. I feel like oh, the explosion might have been like, the fireworks going off soup, early. Oh. Soup Slugboy has, 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 has put out a very no, notable observation about this college, that its education is quite well-rounded. Ha ha ha. says, it's possible. The headmaster can appear, reveal her evil plot. Um, let's see. Any other ideas, Jesse? What do you What do you type? I'm gonna up? let's 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 have the headmaster show up, or let's let's go see her, hoping that the headmaster oh, knows what's going on, okay. and then they can reveal maybe that they were behind it the whole time. We, we've also re we're at the we've college. also made friends with the Kingsmen, who always could help us back. <clears throat> too. That's true. The Kingsmen. And we have King Harold, the King small Harold, hedgehog. The hedgehog. Those are his men. And his retinue. Oh! His retinue of dwarves. <laughs> oh, and he has the, the flaming dragon as like an intimidation thing, but really he's just like a tiny hedgehog. Oh, I love him. <sighs> Branding is hard. You say, The explosion seemed to be a distraction according to those very dumb gods. Maybe the headmaster knows what's going on. I'll see if she's in her office. The rat looks at you and shrugs. Uh, you seem pregnant. Oh my god, what? <laughs> he says. <laughs> For a human. Mm. All right, I'll take you there. You seem cool. <laughs> I love Wait, the idea wanna... that you've somehow, you fooled them by talking about your age into thinking that you're a human when you're very clearly yeah, let's, this, like, let's re yeah, two foot try. You're this two foot tall <laughs> you're, stout. Like, look at him. <laughs> look at him. He's clearly yeah. not a person. <laughs> you rush towards the heart of the uh, school. We do have so a... Oh, oh. Sorry, go ahead. Go, 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 go ahead. What do we have? Oh, we have to do something super sticky stick man saying the headmaster is actually the hedgemaster, a very sarcastic hedgehog. Okay, <laughs> bringing him back. You rush towards the heart of the school, searching for the headmaster's office. You pass classroom after classroom and reach the end of the hall. The door to the headmaster's office is there, just waiting to be passed through. That's what I think. <laughs> I see a door just waiting to be walked through, waiting to be entrance. Look at that door tease. Um, just, uh, yeah, as you reach it through a strange, <laughs> as you reach it through, a strange sensation passes over you. The door is locked. <laughs> Wait a minute. I've unlike, never been able to not open doors. Unlike every other door in the school, it doesn't have a knob <laughs> on this side. <laughs> so much for that idea. Nuts. I like the strange sensation is 
Resistance? <laughs> Wait a minute. There's oh, no knob. There's no knob. <laughs> Uh, so are oh, we using? Maybe it's a push door. Are, are we using the <laughs> headmaster we've seated, or are we going with this hedgehog idea? I don't we know. We should go with the headmaster we've seated. seated, right? Have we seated a oh, headmaster? I think there uh, is. We have many not? headmasters, but I don't know if we have. Who's one the headmaster headmaster. of the College of Roundness? It's Janelle oh. De Larita. Is that it? We do have one. She's um, oh, no. She likes to take over the world. That's in her thing. Oh, wow. Well, that would have been handy to know an hour <laughs> no, ago. That's convenient. Um, so, chat, what do you had, know? We had a very fun day. Um, uh, oh, where, where is she? Um, so we had a fun day generating this world. One of the one of the people that they, we have, Headmaster Bono, Orin, Erasmus, Mary Headmaster Sue. Bono, excellent. Yeah, uh, no, there's a different Headmaster. Um. Uh, no, that's the Chromactomancy one. I don't know. Oh my goodness, I can't find her. Um, it's okay. We uh, we seem to have a. We I, I have her, her in my notes, so she's happens. there in there somewhere. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, his early twenties, Professor Dickory Gag. <laughs> what a name! What a name! Um, but Janella, oh, there we go. Gala. Gala is the head of the College of Roundness. She's a beautiful, clever, yet dangerous woman who's tried to take over the world numerous times. Please note that Gala has not tried to take over the world for any sort of good reason. She just likes power. That's that's her interest. What's her name? Gala? Gala. Not Janelle? Uh, Janelle is the head of the College of Roundness, which, since we're in the College of Roundness right now, that's where we're going. Gal oh, okay. Gala so, is the head. So, yeah. Wait. Oh, wait. So is Gala the head of Roundness or Janelle? Yes. Gala. What? Oh, there okay. is no Janelle. <laughs> oh, wait, I don't. I have Janelle. Janelle. Head of College oh, of Janelle. Roundness. Oh, her name is, sorry, her full name is Janelle, quotation, Gala. Oh. Gallardia. Oh. Oh, yeah. They're, they're one so Gala is her nickname. <laughs> but the, the description says okay. Gala. Uh Oh, we should probably call on Gala then so that the AI knows who we're talking to. Do you want me to read? Yeah. Do you want me to undo? Yeah, do you mind? What I've done? Yeah. Yeah, Janelle doesn't exist in the description of her, so it would be better to call her Gala. And how's um, that spelled? G A L A? That's it, yeah. You knock forcefully on the door and call out Headmaster Gala, are you in there? You wait for an answer. She's, she's known to take the time, so... This isn't a regular door, though. It's solid metal with no windows and a solid-looking <clears throat> wooden frame. There has to be a trick to opening, but what? Magic! Faint sounds come from inside. The headmaster must be in there, but you'll never get in without her permission. You consider trying to break down the door, but it looks solidly constructed. You, you'd have to smash it with something. Heavy first. Of course! There are plenty of those available. I'm so glad there's heavy <laughs> things everywhere. <laughs> ah, look around me. Everything's heavy when you're this small. All right. Um, we should use magic to do magic. something. We need to, like, rounded the door. I don't know yeah. what. We have control We make the door things. round inside of this square frame so that we can push it through. Kind Ooh, of that's good. But look, all of the bolts are round. Could we unrivet the door? <gasps> oh, fun! <laughs> <laughs> with a roundamency. We have to stroke, stroke the roundness and coax them out of the door. Like meerkats in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you enter a meerkat's wow. palace. Yeah. <laughs> stroke the I roundness. Like, uh... I like how Noah's made Gala look like a like a door to a space station, and then Janelle has co-opted this room by I like, putting I like a the, sticky note on it. I like the idea that Gala is her like this will be my empress name, Gala. And she puts it on everything, and all the students are just like, or the teacher, it's Janelle. And like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> they keep trying to take it down, or she keeps taking them down, and they always have another one to put up. Like, look, she's trying to rebrand, and it's kind of gross to be honest. Look, she'll try and take over the world again soon. Don't worry, it'll play itself out. Just Look, I used to know her when she was Ellie. That was nice. She was fine. It was great. <laughs> then Gala came up, and I don't know what happened. We hope it's a phase. Um, 
This isn't regular doors, difference. but with permission, you consider trying to break it. Uh, you summon magic and use your skills from the College of Roundness against the round bolts of the door. The bolts begin to round themselves further, turning and turning as they unscrew. Yes, yes, make them round. Yes. The door then pops off its hinges. The headmaster is sitting behind a desk, staring at you. How, how did you get in here? <laughs> you shrug and enter the office and then reattach the door. Uh, I thought that was... Rather obvious, headmaster. You watched me do it. But anyway, I'm gifted. Gifted? It's an interesting way to put it. So, what can I do for a student of the esteemed College of Weights and Measures? Oh, no, that's fititude, headmaster. <laughs> <laughs> that's the official name of the College of Fititude. <laughs> so, so, so the AI is doing the thing where it's like, it's just assuming that we know what's going on because it yeah. don't know what's going so, on. So, what do you want? I don't know. Uh, you, uh, you explain yourself, and Gallo is surprisingly helpful for once, nodding uh, as you speak. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You <laughs> totally all know what's going on. I'm gonna change it to college right, let's, around this. Let's. Oh, well, she's also from the college around us. Yeah, but I, we're gonna refer to so it. It as seems that weird to be like. Of, it's like it's like you're at U of T and you meet the headmaster and the dean's like, well, what can I do for this esteemed College of Toronto student? Yes, we're just re <laughs> reinforcing the name for the sake of uh, the AI. We'll just call it that. It's strong branding. <laughs> you're right. It's on brand. <laughs> All right. Sticky Stickman says the world is already round, but Sticky Stickman, do you understand the roundness of the world? Because only when you embody the roundness can the world roundness truly be one with you. Think about it. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to finally start using the spooky instrument that I've had for a while because I would like to incite a little bit of oh, uncertainty. Who is she? How's that? Isn't it? Oh, <laughs> Noah, look at us. Oh, we can't reach the handle and we're too short. I'm Wait. gifted. <laughs> oh, I see. This is us. That's not the handle. That's us unbolting. Nice. The action turn arrows there really helped. I Thanks. I can feel the concentration on his face. I can feel Oh, the... look at that. Look at that furrowed brow. I will not stop until all the bolts have been moved. I finish all tasks I set my mind to. <laughs> It takes like three and a half hours of intense hours. concentration. <laughs> she's just working away. <laughs> she's she's just every, blowing up more towns. Yeah, I was gonna say one pop, one <laughs> pops out. Sound? You just hear a ping, and she's just like, <laughs> must have a notification. <laughs> Is that a messenger right, bird in my window? Why, yes, it, it must be the Twitter. <laughs> ah, 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 uh, look, I'm look, only I found this fruit down here, and I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I pick up that bar on your way out. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll try not to trip on it. So, uh, anyway, that's basically what's happened <laughs> up to this point. I'm worried my friends are in danger and that someone is enacting a terrible plot using the fireworks as a distraction. I could really use your help. You say to her, her eyes narrow and slowly, and a slow smile curls on her face. Well, you've come to the right person. She leads you past a tapestry of a knight stabbing a unicorn. <laughs> <I know. laughs> she just has that. <laughs> She's definitely evil, right? There's no <laughs> doubt in my mind. Oh, I see you have the wonderful death of a unicorn by the great weaver. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had it <laughs> personally signed Personal and personalized. <laughs> personally embroidered with his signature. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Behind it is a safe, which she unlocks with an old key. She removes mm. from it, it from a small. Uh, she removes from it a small leather-bound book. Galatea opens the book. And frowns. She's rebranding again. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Galatea. I will be Gala as I conquer the earth, but one day the universe will be that of Galatea. Galatea. Ah! Opens the book and frowns. The pages are completely blank. She begins to channel magic through her hands and whispers no, words in an unknown no. language. Da, da, da. All right. I'm throwing this out to chat. Chat, what is the horrible, Ooh. awful magic that she's doing? 
that's going to take over the world or whatever. Help help me with the plot, chat. That's fun. It's interesting uh, It's interesting that she's <laughs> bringing us along on the ride. It's like, oh, hey, come see my uh, tapestry and my evil book and uh, stand there. I'll, I'll chant a little bit and bish bash bosh bob is your uncle. <laughs> and then suddenly Bob became your uncle. <laughs> this is the Bob um, uncling spell. <laughs> From the College of Uncles. <laughs> <laughs> it's just nothing but cheap beer and terrible jokes. It's a level nine spell college of, of the Robert. College of Roundness because Bob is so round. He's kind of let himself ah. go. Uh, I like Soup Slug Boy says semicircle magic. She's going to cut the College <gasps> of Roundness in half. Dissecting the college. <laughs> That's cool. We also have uh, some sort of demon summoning. That's pretty classic. Uh, uh, Galateo opens the book and frowns. The pages oh. are... Oh, wait. Um... Uh, we have no new text. Have no, no, yeah, no. So just, I'm, I'm, no. I'm looking at um, the chat. The serious piece says, coming up with. Uh, "The magic of inconvenience." <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna make everyone uh, really using inconvenient. The, using the round magic to bend the arrow of time. Whoa! I don't know if we could accomplish whoa, that in 16 whoa, whoa. minutes, but that's pretty cool. And the Cedric shows <laughs> up. Pretty dope. A lot of quiet. a lot of time themes. All right, what do we like, folks? Which one do we like? Um... Or, per the game suggestion, maybe we all think of a noun. We're gonna say them all at once, and we'll figure we out what the no. spell does. Wait, 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 wait! Can we can we assign each other different parts of speech? Oh, awesome! So yes, okay. okay. The this noun is... of ash. Right. Of, so it's like um, yeah, yeah, yeah. adjective <laughs> verb. Um, okay. So, um, Eric, you're gonna take the noun. Um, Jesse, you're gonna take the adjective. Okay. Uh, and I'll, I'll take the verb. <laughs> All right. Everybody ready? Yes. All right. Eric, it's the... Cleaver of... Of... Jesse? Golden... Fracture. <laughs> oh, God. All right. And what? The cleaver of golden fracture. What is... Uh, and toss it to the AI. What is the cleaver of... Uh, golden fracture. Yeah, let's seed that. Let's put that oh, in world right. info. Uh, sure. Yeah, I can do that. Other. Um, uh, spell named the Cleaver of Golden Fracture. Generate. The Cleaver of Golden Fracture is a legendary dwarven-made weapon of great power. It is a weapon of mass oh, destruction capable of destroying entire worlds. It's a symbol of the god of the dwarves and is used by the dwarves in their sacred rites. When used, a cleaver causes a violent earthquake that can destroy entire cities uh -huh. and then cuts them into oh. pieces. After use, oh. the dwarves use the parts to rebuild their cities. <laughs> Like, oh. I'm making this into a D&D &D item now. Oh my god, that's so cool. It's Holy in the world. Shit. Yeah. All right. All, all right. All I'm going to do. I like awesome. this game. I like this game. All I'm going to do like is this. name drop it really and cool. see what the AI does with it. Yeah, do it. Uh, you recognize the spell? It's the Cleaver of Golden Fracture. The language she is speaking is dwarven. You know the spell? Of course I do, my boy. I'm a master of dwarven magic. It's an important part of the study of world history, you know. This could be all about the Kingsmen, too. That's why they're in mm. the city. This is awesome! It's, she frowns. It ties together so well. She frowns, and the book starts to glow gold. But that, that isn't important. What is important is what's behind door number two! <laughs> oh. You're Behind so where dramatic. McKellity <laughs> is sitting. There's a drop from the ledge where her office is. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just pressing oh. enter. <laughs> Wait, can we like look over the ledge and see something? I don't know what it is. Maybe the golden cleaver taking effect in some way. Was he? Okay. Was <laughs> ever the showman? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I I love this even though we might not keep it. Let's just read it because it's great. It's a sh it's a sheer drop, but there is a wooden platform supported by a rope underneath. Galatea pulls on the rope, and it supports the platform. W w what's behind door number two? You ask. 
She shows you the page that has just appeared in the book. It's a crudely drawn picture of what looks like a wooden platform or a, or a bottomless pit. <laughs> the path to success is not always paved with gold. Sometimes it's paved <laughs> with wood. <laughs> Bam, chicka, wow, wow. That's the oh, motto no. for today, everybody. I oh, heard man. that <laughs> doubts never stop until the job. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No. Galatea would have a bottomless pit, though, wouldn't she? That's what they oh, call, but oh, I'm no. sure you could fill it. <laughs> You're a knight. Why don't you stab my unicorn in the throat? <laughs> I'm done. Good night. <laughs> End <the> stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Soup slug boy says Aww. sinful. <laughs> you have a beautiful horn, says so stick a stick. <laughs> Okay, all right, all right. Let's let's go back. We're getting a really cool moment. We've set up the villain, getting into something really awesome here. Let's let's seal it through to the end. Um, we don't have a guest. I'm okay going a little bit long. Uh, if sometimes you guys down at the bottom of the pit, you can just make out the Kingsmen dwarves and your friend Venita trapped below. Galatea has captured them. Galatea, what's going on? Let me friends go. <laughs> <laughs> Let me friends go. So. That's Sorry. been your accent I'm the from, entire time. I'm from Northern Sto Stoatland. Sometimes <laughs> it comes out. I came from I away. I don't think so. I said I don't <laughs> think so, my boy. They're just in my way. If you want them freed, you'll have to make the next stupid choice. You look down at your friends and grind your teeth together. You jump, but you don't know if the wood would hold your weight. Yes. Uh, jump to your friends. Go to their aid. I don't actually know what's happening. Um, you have to make the stupid he... choice to just yeah, jump in the pit. Yeah, I know, I know exactly Ooh. what we're going to do. Wouldn't that be crazy jump in the if pit. you did that? <laughs> <But> <laughs> wouldn't it be crazy? Oh, no, well, I'll tell you one better. No, LOL. If the wood isn't going to hold my weight and I'm a tiny meerkat, it's definitely not going to hold the weight of this large headmaster next to me. Whoa, oh. whoa, 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 she's been working Well, hold out. on. Hey, yeah. <laughs> she's doing her best. What does this have to do with the gold cleaver of I'm going to stop the spell. The I'm going to disrupt fracture, the sorry. spell by pushing her into the pit. Oh, so is this pit like the cleaver is emerging from the depths of hell kind of thing, and this pit has opened up out of which the yes. cleaver will emerge? I like and it. And our friends are also there. Our friends are also near the pit. <laughs> <laughs> They're in a slightly smaller other pit. Is... <laughs> Verisimilitude. <laughs> um, you look down at your friends and grit your teeth. You jump, but you don't think the wood would hold your weight. You push Galatea into the pit. No! She screams as she falls. Hey, get back here! <laughs> yeah, take a running start no! at the platform. No, 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 the stop. wood splinters and cracks no. beneath you. Yeah, this truly it. is a stupid choice. <laughs> you close your eyes for the painful fall, only to land flat on your face on top of Galatea. Oh, hello. I feel like this is one of those young adult novels that really is about a failed metaphor for sex. Like, <laughs> it really is. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, you want to go maybe uh, back a bit? No, I, I, I know what's no. going to happen. Oh, we're we're gonna. What are you thinking? We're gonna fall down uh, the pit and be okay with it. Pit orgy. Well, we landed. We <laughs> landed. We landed on top of her. She broke our fall. Right. We have uh, to go down into the pit anyway to save our friends. Are they in the pit? They're are, are, they're yeah, near. They're saw. near the pit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I put them in a secondary pit. Oh, there's why, two why would you do that? Why oh, two pits? Oh, there's two pits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this plan is up. just the pits. She had oh. her she had her golden cleaver pit, and then her secondary pit for many for you know near do wells and delinquents. Yeah. She's a woman um, of many pits. Well a delinquent Dad. pit. <laughs> delinquent pit. King of Autumn says, "Why to not to five pits? Why not, <laughs> yeah. guys? Why stop at two? You know, 
That's what I say whenever why don't, I'm why don't selling we just real estate. This... Jack, Jack, do you know how many times yeah. when I'm selling real estate, I just mm. people say, I, I think I'm good with two pits. But I say, but really think about it, because if you do it yeah. now, it's a lot cheaper to get it it's done. A, Paul, it's a big investment why not in five? Why don't why let's fill this entire pits. town with pits, pits and make it a Pittsburgh? Yeah, pits, it, a nah, burg nah, nah, pits. Nah, 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 nah. All yeah, right, that was, yeah, well, then we did that one. We found the end of the joke, everyone. Let's take a drink. <laughs> now that we've arrived, let's finish our drinks. <laughs> um. All right. Um. Oh my God! It's so uh, with far the back spell up. disrupted. There it is. Um. Take a running start of the platform. The wood splitters is correct. You follow, uh, with a uh, spell disrupted, the uh, Kingsman dwarves are no longer bound in gold chains. They stand furious at Galatea for using that magic against them. They rip Galatea's ah! head off and throw it down again. I didn't write that part. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and throw it down to you. Yeah, I'm in the secondary pit, I guess. Hey, no, no, or, hey You're so no. shorter than they are. Oh, true, so yes. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Then I realize I'm just standing in a small hole within the pit. I climb out of that, so I'm slightly less shorter. What? Sorry, can we take a second to appreciate Noah's giving us a, a top-down door view? One <laughs> door, door two. There's the other smaller pit, in case you were wondering. He was going right. for the game show feel. Door one, door two, a few pits. Uh, uh, oh, great. Right, you said. She's dead. That's just great. I actually am happy because she was the villain. So could you say that with less irony? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll take it again. Oh, great. Yeah, She's dead. Again. That's just great. All right. <laughs> you mutter as you stand as dwarves do. Stand as do... Oh, you mutter. You stand as do the dwarves. They're not very tall when they're not bound in gold chains. But they look like they'll tear you apart with these. You attempt to calm them down. Hey, it, it wasn't me. She did it. And then I think I think one of the dwarves steps forward, and we recognize this one. What was his name? Remind me. Oh, oh um, um, the one, uh, Dar 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 Darvin? Darvin. 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 It's, it was almost the word dwarven, but not. Yes. <laughs> nice, and he's got the tattoo. That's cool. That's fun. I feel like I feel like all of the plot has happened in the last five minutes, <laughs> but it's tying together nicely. So then, uh, so then, help me tie some some threads together while he types this out. We were captured. The explosion happened. It was a distraction to do what exactly? This was her ultimate plan. I think it was a distraction um, to get this spell off, perhaps. To like get it on, because she didn't use it for a well, while. It, after it could the have. It could have also been just just another plot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> some inept assassins <laughs> trying to kill someone. And this oh, is why may maybe this is her motivation. She's just tired of this world. She's oh, a God. Other woman. She so runs inept. Yeah, I just, everyone is so fucking awful. I'm just going to break it all and start again. Is, um, yeah, okay. All right, all right, all right. That's I, I think that, that says a lot about Galatea. And sometimes when you when you try your best to make a new world, um, you know, you get thrown in a pit and a dwarf rips your head off, and that's just life. I like the idea that uh, she this this way of thinking is so ingrained into herself that she also keeps changing her name so that she can stay ahead of the curve, as it were. Mysterious P really, really wants us to do a perfect magic slam dunk. We don't. We haven't really done the perfect magic slam dunk. <laughs> All right. Fine. It's very important. Maybe that'll be our final freeze frame, like Rocky and Apollo Creed. Oh, fun! Da -da 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 it's the old dog. <laughs> Thank you, Sticky Stick Man. All right. So all of this is happening in her apartment? Yeah. Oh, sorry, well, in her office. In her office. Yeah. In her <laughs> I always thought it was it's like a magic window, office. at least. <laughs> It's, it's bigger on the inside. As large as needed to be. Oh, that's nice. Uh, Trill the Holy says a classic. The PMSD, the perfect magic slam dunk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but no. Whenever I say I just need a real PMSD, 
No one really gets it. No one gets it. <laughs> I just, you know. You're like Alatea. So I go to the gym. I walk in the change room. I'm like, you know, guys, anyone up for a PMSD today? <laughs> Maybe they should watch the stream more often. They'd, they'd figure it out. <laughs> hey, okay. it wasn't anyway. me. Anyway. It wasn't me. She did it. One of the dwarves steps forward. Darvin, your skee-ball friend, recognizes you. Hey, wait. <laughs> he raises his hand to calm the other dwarves down. Hey, hey, hey. This, this one is a friend to us. Uh, he helped stop Galatea from conjuring the cleaver of Golden Fracture. The dwarves mutter in agreement. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. You hey. untie Venita, and you and the dwarves <laughs> celebrate victory by doing a perfect slam dunk using Galatea's Hey! hey. <laughs> when you awake the next day, you find yourself in the infirmary. Your head is throbbing, and you can hear someone crying. Oh! What will I do? What will I do? Your voice cries and you look around. You find yourself staring at a lovely woman with long red hair. You feel as if you know her, but you don't know from where. Hmm. hmm. What Foxillion, you shaved. Um. Oh! Right. Um. Right. Oh, it's Bella. Um. Oh, no, I didn't no. have your text working yet. No. Oh, shoot. Okay. Literally has it this entire time. Oh, no. Soup Slug Boy wants us to make to check if the king's jacket is damaged. Um, Are we keeping this, waking up the infirmary? In the I mean, we can make it fox if you want. Lady. I don't know. I think that ties us in the while. end. I think that ties <laughs> oh. it in nicely. Yeah, well put. You say, Foxlin, you look so different with that haircut. Well done. Foxillion says, thank you. Thank you. Thank she you. cries and hugs you. She says, I can't believe I didn't think of doing this before. I can't believe I didn't think of doing this before. She says, you're so smart. You're so smart. Oh, thank you. I mean, it wasn't my idea. It was all you of your own agency, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I'm a clever. female character in the AI, so therefore I have <laughs> I no have agency. agency. <laughs> <laughs> it's all come full circle. Hey! 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 You go outside and begin to walk around campus. You look at the trees, watching them sway in the gentle breeze. Overhead, a flight of geese take off heading <laughs> south of the wind. <laughs> a flight of what, Eric? Geese. Those geese breeze. <laughs> geese is plural for gauze. Yes. Geese flowing gently in the breeze. In the trees. Uh, you watch them until they can no longer be seen. Then you realize that classes start soon. Oh, we're going to be late for our first day. Ah... Uh, is this, our, is this our ending? Uh, one, one, one last moment. As, as you see, uh, it's, it's chilly and breezy with all these geese, so we adjust our jacket. <laughs> geese. Um, you adjust the king's jacket around your neck against the cold. It's undamaged. You can't really say the same for yourself. What an adventure. You wonder what will happen next. He walks around the campus a bit more now. Uh, a bit more, and see your new friends, the dwarves. They're selling shirts to raise money for some worthy dwarf cause. <laughs> <laughs> the cause of the golden cleaver. Fill the pit! Cover the cleaver! <laughs> Fill the pit! You decide to buy one. After all, not every day you get saved. You get... You get to say you were saved by a bunch of dwarves. <laughs> there we and go. And that's the final word of this grand deal. <laughs> I'd say it's up there with crime and punishment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Charlotte's Web ain't got shit on this story. <laughs> What's that, Holden Caulfield? Yes, yeah, step down. Stand down. 
You want to call us phony? Huh? <laughs> what a beautiful story to wrap out a year. <laughs> what a tale it of truly adventure. Ended as, it ended mystery. as it began. Yeah. Truly baffling. Yeah. All right, chat. As always, sing out for me some song titles. Oh, no, we have one, though. No, it, we did. Remember oh, from the beginning? Mind, chat. <laughs> Shut up, Shut chat. Up, chat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go generate the 12 uh, days of AI dungeon crawlers. <laughs> um, what was the title? What was the full title? Oh, jeez. It's like right at the beginning. Let's go find it. Uh, twelve day. How about 12 days in a Christmas dungeon? <laughs> 12 days in a Christmas dungeon. All right, everybody. I'm going to go generate 12 days in a Christmas dungeon. Um, which was suggested earlier, uh, and they spent points for it. I love it. In the meantime, you want to give us some epilogues? What's happening? Epilogue. Does anyone have an idea for uh, an epilogue? I see someone wants to know what happened to King Harold. King Harold would be great. King Harold, I think, is the most pressing story. Why? He's a king, Noah. Is is you know when you have so much, you got to learn to be happy. I'm Here so we go. Surprised. This this. I'll, I'll seed it maybe as a happy I thing. Know. I'm oh. tired and a little bit tipsy, so don't Fair. listen to me. King Harold swears off drinking and is much better ruler. Galatea is disassembled and her head is put on display in the Museum of National Treasures <laughs> as an example of hubris. <laughs> hey, I slam dunked with that head right into the basket. Look in the uh, Astrologian Dictionary for hubris. hubris. <laughs> See a picture of her severed head. <laughs> Someone All suggested right, after friends? we graduate. And our, we got to know our friends, Foxillian and yes. other one, second best friend. <laughs> the other one. Uh, the, uh, I laugh at you. However, I also forget their forget name. Their name, I know. <laughs> they, God, did they have a lot to say? We graduate from the College of Roundness. Since the war is still going on and there's a shortage of doctors, I decide to pursue that calling. Well, narrator, this isn't your Everyone story. Everyone I, I know story. goes their separate <laughs> ways. Excuse me. We brothers <laughs> stay in touch, but we all know that we probably won't. <laughs> Vanita decides to travel west. That was her name, now, Remember. <laughs> Vanita decides to travel west and explore lands unknown. She says she'll write a book about her travels when she comes back. She was always good at writing. Beautiful. Just like Charlotte. <laughs> Just like Charlotte. She always was spidery when you think about her. <laughs> Greg the Rat continues his terrible job performance. What about his genitals, though? I think he's going to lose his job soon. I hope not, though, because nobody deserves that. Not even a terrible George Rule with tiny genitals. Even they deserve a job. I want to know Foxillian. We never met Foxillian. What should the uh, what should the seed be? Foxillian something I don't know. something. Uh, she's from the College of Fittitude. Um, I don't know. Something about that might be fun. Foxillian graduation? Yeah. She's maybe a pen pal. I don't know. We get a letter from her. That'd be fun. Foxillian graduates the College of Fittitude with flying colors. Aw. Hmm. Wonder if she stayed shaved. And became an instructor there. She marries and has six children, none of which inherit her dwarf-like stature. She's happy, but she misses Marikel terribly. She writes book about her, books of, a book. Of, she writes a book about her adventures, but she gets the wrong detail and she gets the wrong details and the facts wrong. Stories of her adventure. The story of her adventure spreads throughout the nation as a folk's tale, and is never told exactly the same way <gasps> twice. In time, changes from the story. Story. And that's what this was. Was. Uh, okay, one last one. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm only on the second course. Oh. It's taken a while. The winner of the hedgehog hunt was Olivia, <laughs> who caught 179 <laughs> hedgehogs. The winner of the snail race was Harold, oh, who became yeah. third. Uh, good for you, Harold. The snail named Gladys is currently in the possession of King Harold. 
Gladys has been awarded the honorary knighthood and will now be known as Sir Gladys. <laughs> Stalin says. <laughs> Stalin says. <laughs> Stalin was the narrator the whole time. Okay. Shh, shh. <laughs> Don't tell him I'm here. Um, what was the name of our Barnaby? Uh, hell. Uh, the uh, guy that had friend? the. No, who? No, the megaphone, the not P.T. Yeah. Barnum. Oh, um, oh, that's in the world info. Um, uh, Benny Groxon. So it's Benny B E N N Y G R O K S O N. I'll just put his name. I don't know. Uh, Benny Groxon. <laughs> <laughs> Stalin says. Epilogue. <laughs> <laughs> Stalin the says. Benny Groxon comes the hedgehog hunt most decorated participant he is awarded the hedgehog insignia to sew on his clothing Aww. he's given free alcohol for the rest of his life <laughs> oh, that's he King dies, he's covered... when he dies he's covered in medals from his funeral service <clears throat> and his funeral service is held in the church of ha ha Hakim. the rest of the team hedgehogs go their separate ways nothing lasts forever everyone not All right, friends. I'm going to give you here. Um, I I was afraid this would happen. Our Christmas Carol is horrific. Yeah, it's absolutely terrifying. Yeah, just um, like this it's story. <laughs> the scariest Christmas Carol you could ever hear in your life. Um, but it's funnier if we pretend it's not. So here's a lovely set of lyrics for Twelve Days in a Christmas Dungeon, a beautiful Christmas Carol. Begins with, <laughs> with a great line. All right, but uh, before we kick into this, before anyone even reads what's happening. I, I right. promise I'm um, not going to read it. <laughs> who would like verse one? I took verse one last time. Okay, I'll do verse one then. All right, all right. Uh, Noah, you're in on this too. Yeah. Would you like, um, Noah, would you like a verse, chorus, or the bridge? Ooh, um, I will take the bridge. All right, Eric, do you want the verse or the choruses? I'll, do, I'll finish out our chorus this year. Love it. Then I'll take verse two. So verse one's you, Jesse. Choruses are Eric. Uh, I'll take verse two. And Noah, you're going to take the bridge. Right. Um, if, to every time I put chorus, game. it wouldn't generate, unfortunately. So you're going to have to scroll up to where the previous chorus was Which to read okay, it. Okay, yeah, yeah. If that's all right. <laughs> all right, everybody. Here is 12 Days in a Christmas jun uh, Dungeon. <laughs> a beautiful Christmas carol. Um, and I'll give you a lovely little intro. Please load. Why is A jingle, a jangle, a shrill cry in the dark of the night. A shadow descends from the rafters, its fangs are at your face. The sun will not rise, you are doomed to this fate. With a noose tied at the ankles, a hook through the nose. You lean back against cold stone and just hope it goes fast. <laughs> Remember, guys, it's a Christmas carol. We're happy. All right, I'll give you a little little instrumental break. Okay. Twelve days. In a Christmas dungeon Tis the season to feed No one can save you For you'll be the food for the creatures That lurk in the shadows For the goblins and ghouls Warts and your mother <laughs> it's a little personal those mother-in-laws, they'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> you try to remember the lessons that father once taught. Don't appall or discuss your captors, lest you be fed to the beast. Hey. Your heart is racing as shadows move in the corner of your eye. Just lean back and hope you will die before they decide to feed. All right, everybody. <laughs> Twelve days 
in a Christmas dungeon. Tis the season to feed. No I'm hungry. One can save you. You'll be the food for the creatures that lurk in the shadow. There's one of them now. For the goblins and ghouls, warts, and your mother. Oh, mama. Hope that someone will find you before the beasts do. You're not ready to die here in this place. Your faith is all you have left, and your wailing will soon to will soon turn to weeping. The sound fills the air of this hellhole. <laughs> A lament for your fate. Nobody comes to save Nobody you. Comes to save you. Faith Nobody. is all you have. Piano solo. Oh, I can feel the hot coals and the people are roasting. <laughs> is that brimstone I'm smelling? Ah, I love the smell of brimstone at the holiday season. <laughs> Time to plug in the tree, people. Hi. All right, take it away. Twelve days, days in, in a, a Christmas, Christmas dungeon. dungeon. You'll be the food for the creatures that lurk in the shadows. Yum, yum. For the goblins and the ghouls and your mother. That's all, folks. <laughs> Happy holidays. Don't forget, faith is all you have. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's nothing else to say. <laughs> <sighs> Except that you can find us on Instagram and YouTube at AI Dungeon Crawlers. Type exclamation point Discord into the chat to join our Discord community. And I leave you with a quote from Roald Dahl. A little magic can take you a long way. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> Have a happy holiday, everybody. Bye. Happy New Year. We'll see you soon.